Thank you. Welcome to the Town of Highton Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, May 1st, 2018. First thing on the agenda is the continued public hearings for the Trails and Legacy Forms. A couple of things just to reiterate that we have scheduled in two weeks a meeting to go over um, uh, the, for lack of a better term, the Wilson Legacy Farms North intersection, trees, water, et cetera. So if I invite you all to come back, if you've got an interest in that, and we'll try to figure out what's going on. Um, we're also, Cliff is going to be um, handling the meeting. We're gonna try to group some sections together and then open up for questions and, and do it that way and, and keep it moving. Um, what I also suggest is if you're, again, going back and making points, um, if I, I tell people on the board and they can all verify, if you have a really good point to make, you can make it in two minutes. If you then talk long, it probably is not a great point and you're making it up on volume. So we want to hear everybody. Uh, we want everybody's input. Um, and we, I will turn it over to Cliff. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for all coming. Uh, if we could get an overlay of what's been going on with the developer uh, to start things off, that would be great. Any, anything new that you'd like to add for us to? Uh, no new information, uh, but I assume we should just pick up where we left off. Yep, okay. yep. So, sure, that's okay. Sounds right to me. Okay, great, so I believe the next item is utilities. And I can give you a very brief overview. In general, water, sewer, gas, and power provisions were all installed along the frontage of the site as part of the roadway project. So essentially, we just need to put a plug and play, if you will, and tie into those um, locations that were provided. So again, water, sewer, gas, and power throughout the site. Just to touch on sewer quickly, there's a single pump station proposed right here at the end of Road A. So the entire site on the fa for phases one through three flow by gravity to that pump station and then by force main to its ultimate connection point to Legacy Farms North. Excellent. Any need to get into more details on utilities? Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um. Does anyone from the board have any questions for the developer? I have one question to the chair, and maybe I missed this. Everything's going to be underground? Yes, absolutely. And where is the kind of like control box? Is there a control box per se? For power? For power. So what, what typically happens is once the plan is approved, we submit it to the power provider, and they give us transformer locations, switch gear, things of that nature. So we typically show power services in a schematic manner on front of our <coughs> Uh, and then they make the final determination. They, they will not even that. Um, entertain a work order unless we have an approved project. Okay. Anybody else? Amy, do you, you need some catching up? I don't think I missed anything. We're just giving the introduction. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Amy. Thank you. Okay. So with that being said, uh, we will mark utilities off <coughs> if that's okay with everyone. Um, just to my chair's point is that we will get to the public. Um, I, I would like to hold off until um, the public comments at the bottom, but if we have much to do about something, we will, we will listen to it, but as long as it's concise and to the point of the matter. So I want to just make that very clear that we're, we're trying very hard to mitigate this whole thing to the to the best of our ability and stay within our scope of of dealing with our bylaws working with the neighbors and making sure everybody is um you know working together so thank you for that understanding on the next one that is up is construction management plan can we talk about that a little bit please? absolutely so the first sub-item is the phasing plan, which I have up on the easel for you right now. Uh, as we've described in the past, the project is anticipated to be built out in four phases. The yellow outline being phase one, containing approximately 40, 41 units right in that range. Phase two is the blue color, approximately 49. And I say approximately because during construction, that line could move a little bit for 
uh, any number of factors. Uh, so again, approximate numbers. Phase three is the pink area, which is about 43 units. And then finally, approximately 47 units for the green area in phase four. And as you may recall, last time we were here, um, this plan does not reflect that. This is the original phasing plan, but one of the units where our new emergency access is proposed was moved to phase four. So the numbers that I just read to you reflect that one unit moving. Right. And okay. you would re you would replace that that one phase four, right? right. Correct. Right. That's good. Okay. Correct. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions? Part, part of this is that there's going to be an approved management plan. Yes. Thank you. Um, with no questions being needed or asked, does that everybody satisfied with that um, part of that um, construction management phase plan? I have one question for that. As each phase is completed, is the landscaping then done on a per phase basis or is it all built out and then you do the landscaping? I guess the nature of the question is really, especially along the first group, the pink group, that's the one that's, that's most three. Is that three? Yeah. yeah. For three, that's the one that's most closely abuts Wilson Street, right? So the visual impact of that is going to be greatest in that area. Is the landscaping done at the end of that particular phase, or do you complete all the phases? It's actually done during yeah. the phase that we're working on, because people are going to be moving in at a, at a certain rate, and those units would be landscaped before other units in that same phase are, are completed and ready for occupancy. There may um, be sub-phases in each phase. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> Some of the common landscaping say that the idea here is to not inconvenience and, and have an eyesore for the people who are living there with what is going to be coming in future phases. So we're going to take uh, a lot of care and, and time to, with our site contractor to really make sure we we manage that properly and don't have, um, I think there's an item on the agenda here about stockpiles. We're going to be very, very careful about stockpiling things and having uh, current residents having to look at that stockpile for <coughs> extensive periods of time. So it's, it's quite a little balancing act and I have a, I think a very high-end, highly respected, very experienced site contractor from Upton that is uh, going to be doing the contracting here. It's all the site work. And they're, they're used to working in multifamily projects like this and trying to you know, achieve that balance of doing what's efficient for site cost purposes and at the same time not creating you know, inconvenience, extra dust, things like that for current residents. So, I couldn't tell you exactly today how that's going to happen, um, but we would have weekly meetings with our site contractor, and that's something that's very carefully going to be looked at because uh, the site work is, is really a marketing, it's, it's almost a, a, a marketing component <coughs> of the project, and we're trying to build and do site work at the same time that we have people living there, and we certainly don't want new uh, potential buyers to come in on site and see, you know, a mess that the well, current residents have to put up with because that's almost looking in the, in the face what, what they're going to be <coughs> with when they move in. Well, and that, that would bring me to the point of this is that you always have to continually mitigate the, the dust and the, and the debris and everything else going forward so absolutely so yeah. um you know you, you by all by law you have to take care of that stuff anyway going and then i thought you were going to go from phase to phase on completion before you renovated each phase i i don't know why i thought that but that's not the way it's going to be you're going to as you build rent i mean uh, sell them 
put occupy and continue to build in, in neighbors? Right, everything's basically yeah. going to be done based on the, the, the rate of sales. I see. So, and that was one of the reasons that we had proposed the construction access road through the field, the temporary access, so that upon completion of phase one, construction vehicles wouldn't be using this road through phase one. They would bypass that to minimize the impact on the residents. Okay. The chair? Yes. So when when do you plan on putting in the the construction access road? Is that going to go in after phase one and when you begin on phase two? Because that's supposed to be where, where it that will be. That will definitely needed. go in phase one. Um, it, won't meet the, it won't be needed right at the beginning when we first start site work mm -hmm. because we can use really the, call it the main entrance. Yeah, right. There's nobody living there. Right. It's probably the, the, the most mm -hmm. convenient, efficient way to get to anywhere in that first phase. But as that first phase starts to become um, completed, you know, some of the units, then that construction road is going to go in because we're not going to want any damage um, at, mm -hmm. that, at that entrance as that entrance sure. starts to take shape and get completed because that's going to be completed pretty, pretty early in the process because that's a, again, that's a, that's a marketing the front door. Uh, that's well, like well, the front door. There. Mm -hmm. We want that to, to look good. Eight. That's everyone's first impression of the community. <coughs> so as soon as that begins to take shape, then that construction road will, will be used from that point on for really the rest of the three phases. On that one construction road? Yes. Um, how do you plan to, to mitigate the dust that you have while building next to neighbors and stuff? Um, and I don't want to speak for my site contractor, but there were things that I know he routinely would, would be doing. Uh, he probably do have a lot of trucks washing down the, the road, keep the dust weekly. Um, sometimes, depending on what's going on, that could even be more than weekly, depending on what the you know activity level. What that or the weather is. is, or whatever. Oh, the weather is yeah. sure, sure. So, and, and if I could, our, our erosion and sedimentation control plans that were provided include comprehensive notes. Not so much that we're sort of backing a contractor into a corner, because we're not construction managers; we're engineers, so we want the contractor to have flexibility. But we have a set of notes. Uh, things like keep you know extra erosion control measures on site and, and use of watering trucks. Our general notes, um, again included in the plan set, address all of those things. Go ahead, Frank. Did you need? Not that. I was somehow I was making an echo with my paper. Oh. <laughs> um, anyone on the board? I, I do have a question. On phase two, which is the blue, right? Yes, correct. Yes. So, are you going to start doing the work that abuts the road on Wilson Street? There. What's the plan for that? The, the amenities associated with the project are in the open meadow area, so that's the only work. Is there's some grading and establishment of the dog park and the community garden that is currently proposed to be um, part of phase two. Right, but there's so there's no work planned on that. What was talked about the swale or, or along the, the edge of the road there on Wilson Street. There's no planned work to be done on that. Uh, it, it, we haven't really determined exactly what phase that would occur in. It would logically be in phase two or phase three because that's abutting the roadway. I think so. Mr. McDowell wanted to say something. Sure. sure. State a name for, and Roy McDowell for Legacy Farms LLC. Thank you. Um, we have offered, as I suggested, other meetings to do a swale, and I understand now you're having a meeting. I think on the 14th. We're happy to come to that meeting and discuss that in more detail because there may be comments from the community, there may be comments from the board. We're happy to listen to it, we're happy to add some thoughts, but we'll definitely participate in that. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, does that so no, I will just kind of <coughs> echo that comment. I appreciate that. Um, this is a bit of a hot issue for me. Um, we've heard from the, the, the residents and I appreciate that feedback. You know, again, I've told people as part of the running club, when we run down this road and when there's ice, it's from a pedestrian standpoint, it's only gotten worse since the development. So anything that can be done as part of this, which I know it's a little bit separate, but with your group, I'm very open and receptive yeah, to, to those discussions. Can you, you. can you make go back to the mic, please? Sure. Thank you. And could you hold off so for a bit? Well, I thought we, I was next. We're not, we're, I, haven't, I haven't made any decision on no, who's I'll, next I'll yet. Um, Mr. McDowell, would you please come back up to the mic? He's addressing my question. He's it. And when I, I, please, for all the public, 
I will I will make an announcement when the public is going to come up and, and, and do this because we've had too many issues where it gets to be a yelling match and I do not want that to happen tonight we're going to keep it under control and we're going to we're going to stay on point so as I said and my chair had said earlier we're going to we're going to do it in a fashion that is mitigating it to, to get through this and to hear when it is appropriate so I will call up people from the audience as as we get to it again getting back to Brian's comment and I can totally appreciate it and frankly I appreciate what the neighbors are saying about the water coming down because I've seen it myself so I understand it but I also understand from whence it comes and I will say to you that again coming to the meeting on the 14th we will bring our engineer we'll bring our suggestions and I'm confident that the issue regardless of where it's coming from because I think the majority of it's coming from the north but that's excuse me from the south but that's okay we I am confident with the meeting we're gonna have on the 14th this issue can be resolved thank you I have uh, two comments on that and I know it's outside of the scope of this um, three comments it's it's an important issue for me as well um, I have had the opportunity to walk the site with mr. McDowell I have had the opportunity to talk with the neighbor group um, one of the things that I would like us to try and do is invite um, the DPW to that meeting on the 14th if he is available. Um, and then um, I think I have lost my third point, and that's upsetting to me. <laughs> it's going to come back to me. Like a well, when it comes back, you can, you can. Oh, I remember in one of the comments, and it's a little bit. It's a little bit important to me um, that some of the mitigation. Um, or, or much of the mitigation might be proposed along Wilson Street. And I want to be continually sensitive to the fact that it's a scenic road and what we figure out is respectful of uh, the scenic road and sort of repair and, 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 uh, and uh, mitigation for the loss of the piece that we lost. Agreed. And, and to that point, um, I, I want to strongly reiterate that that topic <coughs> is going to be vetted on in the up and coming meetings and I I strongly urge everyone that is not looking inside the scope of this particular pro project that we're working on to refrain from that until that pro that time that it is appropriate for us to bring that up I the outburst really we I, I, I understand the, the, the passion and, the, and the, the feelings that go along with this and we're trying to work together to get to the same result. So please stay within the purview of what we're talking about. I have a question about I, what he said. Okay. So you... State you, your name and your address, please. My name is Kathleen Towner, Nine Kruger Road. So it's a simple question. You asked about the swale and my question is, is it on the plan or is it not? In these plans that have been submitted, is is there a swale on the plan or not? Okay, again, now that is outside the scope he, of. He asked I understand about what it. he asked. He asked about it. I understand. I don't. Let me just let me. One of the confusing things, and we're confused, and I think out there, we report to a when well, we're saying developer and a plan. There's two, in effect, two different developers. So one is Legacy Farms, which is represented by Mr. McDowell. And then we have the developer for this project. He asked about it. Right, I may ask, but I'm trying to explain it because he might be confused too. So I'm just I trying to. For <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. what, it, what it is, the response, the hearing is. It's either what, on the plan or it isn't. What, but it's not, it's not supposed to be on their plan. Well, can the engineer answer that? No, because he it's. He drew the plan. Right. But it's not supposed to be on his plan because it's not their responsibility. It's Legacy Farms' responsibility. I just want to know if it's there or not. Is it physically on the plans? No. No. Because it's not, Can should not be on their answer? plan. You're, 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 you're talking through the board. You don't talk across. Right. Can the board ask the engineer if that structure is on the plan? Is that structure on the plan? When we prepared an exhibit to facilitate the site walk with the neighbors, we were still talking about an emergency access road that connected to Wilson Street. The swale is on the plan for that reason. Uh, let me point to the one area of actually the plan's on the floor. The 
what we observed is water coming down the shoulder and during it up and a larger storm event, water would make its way down Kruger. That was what we heard three meetings ago. So again, when this connection was in place, we proposed a swale to <coughs> mitigate that situation. This is just an exhibit plan. This plan still shows a small section of that swale because we wanted to continue to do the right thing to try to mitigate that situation. It's not part of the project, but as we discussed last time we were here, we kept the swale on the plan. Okay. okay. That's, that's far enough. But this is just an exhibit plan. It's not part of the actual engineering document. Right. And again, I'm going to reiterate this because this is not the place for this for this topic right now. It, that is coming up. And I, 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 I implore you to, to, to st refrain from going. I only responded. I understand. Right. I understand. Thank you for that. Yes, Mr. McDowell. If I could just make one further comment on this issue and hopefully can put it to rest for now. <clears throat> I've been working with this board now for over 10 years. There's been a litany of things we've agreed to do. We've done a significant number of them. This will not be the last time I'm in front of this board. So I'm standing here in public on television telling all of you that on the 14th, when I come to this meeting, we are going to help you resolve the problem. Period. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that openness. If I may? Yes, sir. Um, a couple of uh, observations and things that might clarify, hopefully. Uh, Mr. McDowell is in charge <coughs> of the whole me. entire project. Um, these developers are part of one part of the development, and there is overlap concerning Scenic Roadway um, <coughs> along Wilson Street. Um, but most of that, all of that, will be resolved at the 14th meeting. But what's not clear to us yet, because we're not there yet in the outline, is uh, who exactly is going to be handling what, because right now this board does not know yet, and we, we will get to it. Um, but second, I do, I do think it was a fair question that, that she asked, mm -hmm. um, and uh, about the phases and when things get done, I would like to request that the board urge that the trees being replaced uh, be done in the first phase, not in the later phases, along Wilson Street. Go ahead, Mario. Because I, oh, I, I, I think you, I think you have. A that's point. all I have to say about it. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but no, uh, because I want I want you to know that that I, I agree with you on that, except for the fact that again that is outside the scope here right now. But no, 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 no <coughs> talking about no, it's not. this these developers. He's right. right. Go ahead. These developers, when they're planning to do the tree replacement, either with Mr. oh, well, I see what you, I see what you mean. That it happened during the first phase. Okay. All right. Yeah. So no, Mario. So we should just make a note to discuss that on the 14th, the coordination between right. the two, right? Or a condition it in this. I would condition it. Yeah. Condition it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so, since we're on the subject of landscaping and trees. Um, uh, I listened uh, thoughtfully to your plan, and I believe you that you know, as this is the front door to your um, development, you want it to continuously look lovely and inviting. Um, I want to just make the point that we want you to pay special attention to the back door, so that the existing neighbors, while there aren't that many of them, um, have the same experience and uh, expected enjoyment. And if more trees need to be added to shield um, the existing neighbors. Um, that would be a thoughtful and appreciated. And thank you for that consideration. I would, I would appreciate that too. And I think the whole board, that's, that speaks volumes for the board as well. If, um, I, I think that falls into the mitigation aspect of what you're doing. Right. And uh, hopefully that is, is seen throughout the whole project that, that we, you know, there's some disturbances that go along with the neighbors. And, and if you can mitigate that to be the, the best resolution. That's what we're all here for, anyway. Okay. Through the chair, if, if I could get clarification, uh, when I was he hearing that uh, some trees should be put in the first phase, I did meet with uh, Muriel Kramer last week, and we talked about planting some trees with Eversource, uh, taking down the trees along Wilson Street, and I suggested putting in five rather large, headed, three and a half inch caliber maple trees along there, or another variety someone wanted. In a, I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to as being planted in the first phase. It's not part of this proposal, however, we have said <clears throat> if the board and the neighbors would like that we would put in those five trees uh, on be Wilson Street. Previous, before, before we hadn't phase? talked about that in, in the meeting. I, if, I have gone out to, to speak to people, as I said, that I would about the, the, uh, yes. 
the issue on, on Wilson Street. So I don't think that has ever come up. I never said anything after our conversation. Okay. No, so I just said as, as, as a point of goodwill, because yeah. I know the neighbors are concerned. Yeah. All those trees are gone. Yeah. And I suggested when I met with Muriel that we would consider if the neighbors would like us to in the board to plant five significant trees along Wilson Street in that stretch where the trees were taken down. And if the board would like that, the neighbors would like that, we would consider doing that in the first phase. In the first phase. Okay. Does anyone in the audience, would like anyone like to comment on that? I should clarify. And, and, and I may, may I make a point before before we do? Okay. Is I just what am I what are we you it, asking well, us to comment well, on? Well, about the five trees. Because okay, in, we're sort of going the, all yeah, over the place. In, here. in the in the first phase, they, they they would put up five trees. Yes, I understand. To, to help mitigate yeah. some of the stuff that's going on there. So to that point, I'm saying uh, what I'd like to say is that that's an offer of an olive branch. I think for for right now, I don't think that that's the end all, but and I don't think that that is even you know. It, it's not up to, for me to decide how that's going to, to pan out or this, this board to, but as far as working with each other, the, the builder, the developers, and the engineers, and the, the public, I think that that would be a first good faith step forward. Yeah. If, 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 if I'm, if it would mean on yes. the other side of that. I, I actually have a question that relates to phasing and landscaping. Is that all right to talk about? Um, sure. Okay. That's okay. Um, what, speaking to what Muriel said about the um, putting trees in along the furthermost northernmost part of Wilson, where there's actually that's the right thing. Uh, yeah, the the section. Uh, can I just you can go, go over point here? Yeah, 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 please. <laughs> this section here um, is, any, or any of this actually, because. Um, <coughs> I mean, I don't know if that's normal practice to do during construction or before construction. I'm just wondering, as far as shielding us from the effects of construction, those trees there would all be appreciated as well. Is, could that be done on, on your part? Uh, is, can something be done to mitigate some visualization in, um, aspect of, of... Actually, I, I thought we covered this at the last meeting and when we said that um, it might have those, my those trees, as you see them on the plan, um, that's that's a start. I was and, also talking about further down. And as other units uh, get built, and now we can see what we can see. Then you will add acts, to it. We will certainly add additional trees um, if it will help. Believe me, I. Uh, my residents would probably want to be screened and not have to look at what's down there as well. Okay. So it works both ways. Thank you. All right, so I, I'm sorry, state your name and... and Julia Linnell, 5 Reservoir Road. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, so go ahead. And, with, no, so um, so I was talking about further down than the northernmost part. So I would... I, I, I was just so addressing further excuse? down. You were just addressing further down where there's no trees shown? Yes, yes, where addressing. the drainage area is. And right. I'm assuming that you would put the drainage... There's a drainage system underneath, right there, right? There's a That's what we were told, here. yeah. There's a pipe in as well. Yes, and um, so I'm assuming that you might um, do that prior to construction as well, the drainage area. I'm not gonna talking about the drainage area, I'm just talking about the doing all the work there. I'm assuming that you would do the landscaping there as well. Uh, yes. If I'm understanding That's the in the third phase. I, yeah. I don't see that happening. Oh, you would do that in the third phase? Well, for that particular area, but what we need to do first is establish the proposed site grades, get that stabilized, and then plant trees. In other words, you don't want to plant a tree before construction where there's three feet of fill or two feet of cut. So you have okay. to establish the site grades and then plant the trees. Thank you for that information. Okay. Does okay. that help anybody out? So as far as phase goes, you would wait until the third phase to do any of that landscaping, is that correct? Well, there's no activity proposed in that area of the site until phase three of the project for okay. the, the color plan that we talked about. Okay. But if I'm, if I'm correct, if I'm correct in understanding this, is that Mr. McDowell just said that in phase one, you would be willing to put... No, that's a completely different area. I, was yeah. sure. I wanted to get back to that for a point. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's a different area. That's, a, that's on Wilson Street. Okay. Up near... It's off the page here. Right. It's newer. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, but you are willing to put trees in there after construction. Is that what I'm trying to understand? Yes? That's 
after phase three. Yes, you said he would yeah, during, yeah, after phase three. three. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to talk to him. Thank, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So Sorry. for the chair, just back to the comments that Roy was making about the five trees, and he did mention that during the sidewalk, and I'm glad that he followed through with big solid trees, and I just wanted to say that I, I thought maples would be a great idea because they're large trees and grow very well and would look good there. The only point I wanted to make, and I mentioned it offline to Roy, is that please put them in a distance away from the telephone pole so that they have room yeah. to grow. Definitely. Okay. Good point. <laughs> yes, for clarification, what I'm asking for is a little bit different from what I'm hearing, is that along Wilson Street, on the northernmost part of this parcel, uh, there is a, a large swath of land where there are trees currently and could be future trees planted as part of this project. And since there is not construction going on and there's not any wetlands involved, I would like to see plantings occur along Wilson Street uh, on the property that would help screen the neighbors uh, at the beginning of the project because it's not near the construction. And then as you finish your construction, adding the more trees closer to the buildings. Can I ask you a question to clarify? Do you mean yeah. on the yeah. <laughs> Can you hide that? Yeah. 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 You, got your, you got your pointer with it? We'll see, keep going. I'm going to walk through it just one more time yeah. if I could. Yeah. Please. This white area on the plan, yeah. all this vegetation is to remain. Yep. So it's the already there. The at the mm -hmm. edge of the clearing right. are, will be supplemented behind that. What's, what exists today along this stretch is sort of a scrub vegetation. It was completely cleared at one point in void of vegetation. It has grown back in over the years. Um, so, but to my earlier point, we can't plant trees until we establish the site plates. Right. So it can't be the first thing that we do is plant a screen because they'd be in the way, they'd be damaged. We have to establish site grades and then bring in the trees. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're talking about putting some trees in because there are existing neighbors on the other side. So for their benefit, I, I appreciate that you have to do it when it makes sense, but along that far end of Wilson Street where you're, you were just talking, make sure there's a little screening down there for existing I, neighbors. I think what we said is, again, two weeks in a row now that he's willing to do that. Um, and what we've done, so there are no neighbors on this side. Right. Again, Vin is willing to, to supplement that. Is that state park there? Yes. Totally. What's that building? Area. It, but there's a, 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 a reservoir. Isn't there some type of work shed back there or something? What's that? Farther down. There's a water treat. Yeah, water treat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's a little, a little farther down, I think. I think there's one or two houses back in that corner, though. I do, too. Yeah. If you could just use your pointer to point over to where we're, where we're referencing. The nearest home is here. Everything that we're talking about along that bend is completely wooded. No structures, no development. Isn't there one house back there? There's one house here. Yeah, I think so. Can you point out the, sorry, to the chair. Can you point out the triangle that you're showing in the bottom map? Where does that, see that open area, where does that show up in the top? On the, on the bottom map on the floor. The, yeah. tr a tr the triangle? Yeah. What the do you mean by triangle? Where you, where you were just pointing with your laser? The open area between the road. Oh. So this area right here is what we're talking about. There's a single home here on Wilson, and then out behind it, that's right here, there's another home. But there's a significant wooded buffer between Wilson Street and that home. And then to the north of that home is entirely mature woodland. So again, this, let me see if I can get you oriented. This corner right here is that corner. Right. Okay. So go ahead. Chris Small, 5 Reservoir, Reservoir Road. If I could step to the map. Sure. Or the one on the floor? Okay. This road is the road that Judy and I live on. Our house is here that you see on this map. Yeah, back up in there. Back in here. Back, back, yep. back in here. Yep. Right, but the, your, your access is from Kruger, correct? Yes. Right, so that this is a. If I could finish. Sure. Okay. We're here. We will see, and we see out of our bedroom window, everything here across the street. We see everything coming up this hill. Right now we see trees, and we see bare scrubland right now. 
that makes sense to you. So you cannot say it's um, going to be pleasant for us to look at the back of all of these structures, regardless of design and their back decks and everything, without significant shielding, as has been put in here to protect the view of all the new residents. We're talking about existing residents, us being some of them, that don't want to see the back of these houses. I would suggest that there should be significant mitigation for plantings along this route. And this map, as you well know, continues all the way down to House Street and the water treatment plant. This is the very view that people see from the state park, and it needs to be addressed. It's a significant impact. Thank you. And if I could make one more point okay. with respect to the um, construction management plan, I, I believe that the planning board should apply a condition to that management plan and uh, there should be uh, to the issuance of phase occupancy permits within this project, the new residents should be protected by um, barriers from occupied houses as the occupancy permits are issued from construction ongoing for the benefit of everybody within the site because it's not happening on poultry. It's not happening. It's dangerous. That's what I've got to say about thank, that. thank you very much. Can I, can I ask, um, can you please come back up. Um, I'm not sure what, you're, what you mean. Um, so when the occupancy permit is issued is when you want to see a the screening go up? If, if you were to think about a commercial project, mm -hmm. there would be a barrier separating the public from construction. In the Pulte situation, on the Northern Parcel, there is a building site within which people live without safety barriers protecting the new residents from ongoing construction. There's a liability issue ongoing right now that the language of the zone does not cover, that does not protect the new residents or the current residents from potential litigation. To that, go ahead, Frank. Yeah, I, I, after I, we got the email, the letter about this, I drove through the, the north side and he's, he's exactly right. Uh, there are kids playing, and then they're not in the houses that I saw, but uh, next to wires and, and hoses and, and construction materials uh, all over, and um, it was after the workers were gone, uh, but there were signs up saying no entrance on each, each of the homes that they're, that are under construction, but a sign's not going to stop a, a, a teenager from exploring. Uh, so maybe there should be something... Uh, there should be something we should uh, do about both sides of this. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what. Anybody else on the board? I would suggest to leave it now during construction. Who supervises construction line? The building inspector. Building inspector is to basically say. And also, the board does have a, an engineering consultant do inspections okay. as well. To do whatever is necessary to ensure safety for surrounding yeah. residents. Okay. And it rather than us trying to determine exactly what should go up, let's put a provision in leaving it to the people whose do. job it is to do that. And I agree with that. So, go ahead. I was going to say, to, the, to comment uh, the, to his first point about the trees, I think what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you were open to putting some additional trees slash landscaping along those, along the existing northern area of Wilson Street where it bends around. <coughs> Am I correct in that? What I've heard? Right. right. No. Actually, I'm, I'm, trees I'm, to I'm be fine here. Just <coughs> adding, <coughs> okay, all right. We get it. We get it now. We do appreciate <laughs> trees. Thank you so much. <laughs> does that, Mr. Small, Mr. Small, does that help address one of your concerns? That you Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. With that being said, uh, Go ahead, David. I just want to go back to the second point about safety. Um, 
and I, John, I understand your point, but that doesn't really, it's not helping us if we look back at what's happening with Legacy North right now. So um, is there something that, is this maybe a zoning, uh, a ZAC issue where they can address something going forward, to something like this? I just, Would I just feel like we're skirting it and not really addressing it. To that point, I think. <laughs> well, why don't we ask Elaine? Yeah. Elaine, would that be a bylaw exactly? I don't. I don't think it would be a bylaw. It may be a general bylaw, but not okay. a zoning bylaw. Right. But something we could discuss. Yeah, we could re discuss it and recommend that yeah. a general bylaw related to that. Because because that, that doesn't fall within our purview. Sure. That's the board is like. And to that point, I think David that that we have found issues that have come up throughout all of our, our bylaws and everything, and we've made adjustments to those, and I think that there was a reference point of, of how we've made adjustments over the years, and, and we can't figure out a problem until the problem is in front of us. Why don't I make or, a suggestion? Why don't I draft a letter? We can work on a letter board of selectmen presented at the next meeting. That'd be great. That I would really like to talk about it, though. I just, I don't, I don't know necessarily, I'm all about safety, but I don't know that I have ever seen residential construction be protected by fencing or whatever and I'm, I just want to, you know, sometimes unintended concept, I just like yeah. to have the conversation before we whip off a letter. No, 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 but the letter will say yes, the, to, to look into what would be necessary. And I, I'm the last so to one to explore it, not to, to explore it because it. I don't think it's up to us to dictate <coughs> what is safe construction. So can I, I don't know if maybe to Frank's point, if we could ask the building inspector to go and take a look at what Frank saw to make sure it seems safe to him and yeah. complying with him. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, in most communities, this comes under the purview of the building commissioner. Yep, that's why I want to defer to. Right, right. And yeah. there are mass general laws for open trenches and excavations right. that have to be protected. And I'm, Excuse me. and I'm sure that those are being adhered to as, as best. So go ahead. So I just wanted to follow up that I think it's it's more of a situation with the Osmod, and not the Osmod, the open space yeah what, yes. what does this fall under is it osmond yeah osmond yes. mixed use right sorry mixed use because everything's so close together i think in all our traditional development mm -hmm. it's not as big of an issue because of the distance between houses and stuff so unfortunately right. we probably won't get this resolved until we won't have any osmond types in front of us going forward but at least we can try to address the safety so I, I guess that's my point of just having a conversation. I'm totally thrilled to have a conversation mm -hmm. about it and sort yeah. of see where we fall, but maybe not tonight. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to note for our minutes, I guess, that he just mentioned that there are specific rules about open trenches. I did observe an open trench, maybe 20 feet from where these kids were playing, basketball in, in their, in their uh, road and driveway. So it does sound like there is an issue that Someone should look into uh, be it the board of selectmen. Building I, I really, the building the building I really do like right. that you're writing that letter. Uh, it shows that our board is trying to look forward on this, um, and it's. Uh, I don't want to be caught short on anything because if there is an issue, you know, we should look into it sooner than later. Okay. Okay. I, I totally recommend that you call the building inspector in the meantime if you are concerned. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Go ahead, yes. um, So this is just in the construction management aspect, not in this one specific area. But I see that we have the, the dog park in uh, the, the hidden in your, your colored uh, your, your colored schematic. Um, the dog park is part of phase two. Is that going to be built like? In conjunction with the houses, or does that go in first? And what is the impact of Phase Three going to have on the on the dog park and those uh, those facilities while uh, while it's being built? Well, since those components are behind units in Phase Two, it makes logical sense that those amenities would be constructed first and stabilized, so mm -hmm. that you sort of work from the back inward. I think that makes a lot more sense. Does that answer your question? Yes. Um, but the second part is, will the will those areas be disturbed while phase three is going in? No, no, no. Once they're established, you know, the final grades are established and, and uh, seated and stabilized, there will be no more activity in those areas. And the construction access road doesn't kind of cut through that. 
The construction yeah. access road comes through here mm -hmm. okay. and essentially aligns with this intersection mm -hmm. in this location. So that, is there going to be like one house that doesn't get built? Essentially, yes. yes. Okay. And that's what and we that's were talking about where we need to give the contract a little flexibility, gotcha. which is a very rigid plan. There needs to be some flexibility to address exactly that, okay. those types of issues as they arise. Understood. When that house gets infilled, mm -hmm. et cetera. Okay. I think it's the right. same thing like with the house. Okay. You okay? We're going to have to not build a certain house in order, yeah. <laughs> in order to put that right in. So everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody all right? All right, with that being said, um, we've finished um, I of the construction management. Yeah. I didn't hear any mention of the um, construction stock files and rock. We haven't gotten there. We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, because we just closed. Oh, we only, okay. No, okay. So, so we, number one. we've M1. gone through phase. Right. M1. M1. Right. Yeah. Now we're going to M2. M2 is where we're at now. Thank you for that. All right, so on, on uh, cuts and fills, the scope of the of, uh, site work. Sure. Can you give us a little background? Sure, I'll give you a high-level overview. What we always do on any project is try to achieve a balance between the cuts and fills so that we don't have excessive import of materials or export of materials. In this case, we were able to get very close. We do, our numbers are showing a slight fill or an import condition, but what the numbers do not um, take into account are all the utility trenches. So if we're, again, in other words, if we're showing a, a, a say an 8,000 cubic yard import, all the material that's going to be excavated for all of the sewer pipe, drainage pipe, uh, power, gas, that material is, and what I'm trying to say is we don't do a surgical analysis. So. I think what we have achieved here is, a, is as close to a balanced condition as we're going to get. We always will have some import of material, sand for trenches, uh, gravel based material, of course pavement, those types of materials have to be imported. But what we're primarily focused on here is the parent material, the cut and fill of the, the parent earth material. Correct. So we analyze the site basically phases one through three as an earthwork calculation, and then just because of the, the physical separation from one through three and four, we analyze that as a separate um, entity. And both conditions show a slight import of material and perhaps an export of topsoil. We do have a fairly thick layer of topsoil on this site just because of the nature of the previous use. So we may not be able to use all of that material in the final condition. So there may be an export of topsoil which has a value, of course. Okay. Right, I think we ahead. have some regulations related to that, right? The removal mm -hmm. of topsoil? Yeah, Wayne, can you speak to that? Or when someone's doing a construction project, there are no regulations other than the creating the site that you approve, that you design, that is designed and approved. So there's no separate regulations for that. What's the role of um, Don McAdam as an earth agent? So an earth removal permit is needed when there isn't a, a construction project that's gone through site plan review or has a building permit. So it's something else, such as a quarry operation or something that doesn't need some other kind of approval. Because it's redundant, because you're reviewing it right now. Okay. Thank you for that Thank information. Just a quick follow-up comment, please. Yep. Have I seen that in certain conditions of other developments? There's in. always a standard condition about not importing, exporting more than you need. So you're supposed to use as much as you can on site. Okay. And you're not supposed to turn it into an earth processing operation okay. that's used, that materials for other places. Right. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Here's a question. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, uh, it was, you know, farming was, was done on this land and a lot of uh, pesticides were used. Um, we were told this on the Green Committee when we were looking to do a uh, community uh, farm situation. Uh, how would that be handled if there if there are levels of pesticides that are too high? Just remove it. That's kind of where they say as an answer. Uh, we we've had this site, the entire site, fully tested. <clears throat> Matter of fact, we were before the Board of Health last year, and there was one area where we had some deldrin, and we had that totally removed. We have a clean site with DEP. So already handled. It's all, all been handled. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, 
So net cuts and fills, I think uh, we've, we've exacerbated that. Uh, construction stockpiles and rocks in uh, crush, crushing locations, rock, rock crushing locations. Sure. So again, we've provided erosion and sedimentation control plans as part of our plan set that was submitted to the board. Again, not being construction managers, we have general notes. We show general locations of stockpiling, but we do not want to dictate and sort of uh, back a contractor into a corner by designating specific stockpiling areas. So we want to have some flexibility in that. What we do uh, indicate in our notes is we certainly don't want material stockpiled in buffer zones to weapons and things of that nature. Uh, any stockpiling, regardless of where it's located, has to have erosion control measures around it. It has to be stabilized if it's going to be there for a certain length of time. So, again, parameters for the contractor to follow, but not so rigid that they can't do their job. And that also incorporates safety for residents and of the like, right? Uh, to an extent, sure. Yeah. 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 Yes. But I think we're talking about two different things. But right, right. But I'm, I'm saying through the through the stabilization of the environment and stuff and the stockpiling of, of things. You, there is safety precautions as sure. well that go along with that. Um, anybody from the board got anything for this one? I guess, so I guess I'm wondering, I want to make sure that the stockpiles are shielded from the residents' view. Uh, but we don't, I guess, but we don't know where they're going to be yet. Is that the That's right. Yeah, but but like Mark question, we didn't tell you right now right. until we start doing our grading and All right, to that to that question know what, what we have yeah. for us. Yeah. So so to that question I the the rock crushing you don't bring in a, a rock crusher, you use the the machine the that breaks up the stone, is it? Depends on the volume of material that you encounter. Yeah. All right. So we will make a condition of of that, if, would that be all right? If, if um, can you can you phrase that for us? Um, a condition to, to shield the stockpiles and the rock crushing equipment from the view of residents. Something along those lines. I certainly respect where you're going, but I mean, when this is an active construction site, I think that's very loosely defined. You might be able to see a stockpile that's 300 yards away in the interior of the site. It may be impossible. To quote screen that, so I just I would caution the board. I, I certainly respect and understand the intent. Right. So maybe if there's some sort of setback where a stockpile can't be within, you know, 100 feet of a roadway or something to that that's more yeah. measurable. I mean, I'm open to it, Mary. If you have a thought. I, uh, I'm actually my my head is stuck on rock crushing. <laughs> 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 um, I'm just wondering about sound mitigation. So that would you would clearly make an effort to move that away from people as much as possible, right? I mean, Again, we're, we're trying to balance this with right. people who are living there. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about the people who are living there and because they're going to be the closest to whatever operation is going on. Right, and I just uh, want to I'm, make sure that includes the people who are already living there mm -hmm. and moving into Yeah, they're, they're going right? to be a, a further right. distance from that. But right. um, I mean, I've had a preliminary discussion with my site <laughs> contractor and he's gone up to look at the conditions at the Pulte site to see what they've uncovered as they've done their excavation there to see, you know, sure. the volume of, of rocks and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And um, he says it's for a, a site the size of um, the site that they excavated, it was not an abnormal amount of rocks. This is New England. We expect to have rocks um, mm -hmm. and pretty large ones here and there, mm -hmm. but the quantity that he saw over there, and he talked to the site contractor over there who actually had a, a history of many years up here on the site, and um, my site contractor would prefer to truck those away. In fact, he's already got a, um, <clears throat> an arrangement with, uh, I believe it's Tresca Concrete in Medway or Medfield where they would take the boulders, basically just put on a truck and truck down to uh, their plant. So there'd be no rock crushing operation. Generally, you don't rock crush unless you're looking to use the crushed okay. rock on okay. site. Okay. And I, I don't think that we're gonna be doing that to any great extent. In fact, I don't think we're gonna do it at all. But again, 
we don't want to tie ourselves in and tie my site contractor's hands with with conditions that you know make it difficult for him to do his job. I think he's he's going to be very sensitive to the things we're talking about here. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So I had a comment about Katie Katie Towner Nine Kruger Road. I had a comment about the stockpiling um, and the <clears throat> that blue area. Um, I suspect is going to be um, an area that might have some stockpiling, and so my my concern is the um, how the effect of the stockpiling on changing the impervious nature of the of the land and how that. <clears throat> yeah, um, Given that, given that this drainage solution might be, you know, some time in being fully implemented, um, the the stockpiling and um, you know the the road that's going to go through there, all of those things are going to going to um, make exacerbate it a bad situation. It's all we already have a situation where we have a essentially a stream draining into the road. So All right. anything that this, this type of activity um, would seem to exacerbate that. Thank you. Thank you. So to that point, um, I, I, again, I think it's been reiterated over and over again is that you have your due diligence to do things as you progress through, which is mitigate, make sure of um, sediment control and all that other stuff. And that is all in the scope of the of the development so i think it's kind of redundant to go back into that again right um so well, we understand that our responsibility yeah. um and is that all of the drainage that's created by the impervious surface on our property is going to be kept on our property none of this um is going to go off property into streets it's going to be kept on the property and there are plenty of mitigation um, and that's what the building inspector will do anyway, is to make sure of that. So thank you for that. Right. I appreciate that. State your name. Julia Linnell, Five Reservoir Road. Um, it's, this is, seems sort of obvious, but why wouldn't you do the stockpiling and crushing on the uh, fourth phase? I don't know what you do when you start building the fourth phase, but it's it, it, it's away from everybody. I, and I know I'm not going to answer. What I'm what I'm what I'm asking is we, we just heard them them tell us that they're probably not going to do much um, stockpile I mean uh, rock crushing and stuff on, on the on the I site. have no idea how loud rock crushing is but yeah, yeah. And, and nor do I but, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to find out <laughs> but uh, but again I think we're we're overstating the the aspect of this because this is what they have to do and this is what the building inspector does to to make sure that that they're following protocol so we'll, I think we're going to defer it over to the building inspector to, 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 to govern that. I'm just thinking from the viewpoint of the uh, current neighbors. I, I, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. And I think they're, they're, it seems kind of obvious to put it, to do that operation. On. Well, that, that, that might seem obvious to you, but right. under, yeah, under them, I don't, yeah, I, don't know if, I don't know if that has anything to do with us mitigating to them how we we can't tell them how to build right. because we're not builders. Right. So we have bylaws that say what we what we look. Mr. Chair, yes. Um, I do see that between phases one, two, and three, and phase four, there is, it's separated by wetlands. So I think that might be one of the reasons why you wouldn't want to stockpile for one, two, and three in phase four because then you'd be crossing a wetland. Um, but then again, that's a, a yeah, outside of our scope of, of okay. understanding. I think. Yeah. Isn't that? I mean, we're only we're only speculating. We're speculating at best, and I and I'd really like to keep it on track here. Is that again, um, the how they construct? They they we set the guidelines, and they they they're they're there to follow them, and we have people in place to make that to, and, and to watch over that. So let's let them do that what they do right, and let us do what we do right, and keep you in mind as to. How it affects you, and we're, we're all trying to get through this. All right, thank you. Thank you. Should, should we add that a site condition that all oh, the stockpiling should be a certain number of feet from the roadways? That's not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable mm -hmm. to ask okay. something like that. I, I was thinking along the same lines. Yeah. That we would have some type of condition to keep a distance uh, setback, 
as well as um, the condition that any any stockpile material should not interfere with drainage. Right. Can you can you elaborate on that for us? If it does that does that bode with you as far as can that be done? A specified distance from the road. From the road. So I would I would suggest that 100 feet is probably an appropriate number or distance to use. How, how about is that what you're looking for? <laughs> I said 100 feet. Just give a little bit more space. Something within that. I think that's a reasonable uh, suggestion, Muriel. I like it. And I just want to make since I'm not going to be on the board in, after two weeks, just remember this is the first time you're doing it. So therefore, you now have to include it. Or you should look at seriously including it on any fur further projects. Let's, you approve. let's take so a just, note for our future agenda. Um, just for future agenda. Elaine, okay. does that is that is that the protocol? If we decide to do it on this project here, does it does it evolve itself to as a precedent? As a precedent to every. It doesn't. It doesn't. No. Require it's not a legal not precedent, but if you're giving the courtesy to do it. You should do it to other neighbors down. We can. If we can, yeah. I, I, and I agree. Does everybody agree with that on the board? Just one comment. I would say it might apply more to this Osma than it would mm -hmm. to a typical right. development. Right. Sure. Right. Sure. Right. sure. That's fair. Okay. So. Yeah. So I just want to point out that while I'm in favor of it, I will also not be on the board. So. Okay. All right. State your name. Chris Small, Five Reservoir Road. With respect to protocols and the the chief enforcement officer officer in town, given that there's only one and a half building inspectors in town, or one full time, one half time, part time, um, I believe under criterion 4-19, the chief enforcement officer has a right to employ extra assistance to help oversee the on-site conditions, which might actually be necessary in order to oversee this overall project, given the 1,600 permits being issued in town <coughs> last year. So uh, it might be something to consider. I don't know if the protocol is the planning board recommends assistance or whether the chief enforcement officer has to ask for assistance. But to assume that he has sufficient time to address protocol issues on site is a bad assumption. Okay, thank you. But uh, uh, yeah, I was going to explain. do you explain? At the additional supervision. So um, the condition has been in for all the, the phases of, of Legacy Farms, and so they do have the ability to hire additional people as needed at the expense of the, the developer. Okay. 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 I have a question. So the, relating to the building inspector will be included in that, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but perhaps we might want to call that out in John's letter to the selectmen saying that we, we've noticed some risks in the, the current construction and Perhaps okay. maybe we should suggest a possibility of a condition. I think they are already. There's somebody. Have they hired anybody additional for the? No, but uh, Beta Group does on-site inspections okay. for, the, so we, for the planning okay. board as well. Yep. Thank you. So we could uh, condition it to have extra for this one particular project if we wanted. It's a standard condition in all of the board site plan approvals, no matter where they are, that uh, additional people can be hired at the okay. developer's expense. Thank you. And they don't need prior approval to do that. Thank you. So Go ahead. Regarding the rock crushing, it really does seem like the preferable solution to do it off-site if they're not going to need the crushed rock mm -hmm. on-site. I don't know if that is kind of a site condition or just a state of preference. Uh, okay. Mr. Yeah. McDowell, could I, you I step up? I, I, in listening to Ben, I think He's probably going to want to do minimal rock crushing. I don't. I don't think you want to <coughs> exclusively exclude it. No. Because I will tell Absolutely you, the, the site contractor is going to want to crush some stone for purposes on site. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how that consists of what goes into that, but I do know that, of course, there's going to be work that needs to be done on site. So. You know, I, I think the simple answer is for the contractor to keep the consideration of the neighbors in mind when they locate where the rock crusher is going to be. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Related to the rock crushing, it, are the hours of operation going to fall within the 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. during the week and 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the Saturday? So those, those are standard hours. Those are standard hours. I would say it's in the, the bylaw. Yeah. Excuse me. The town has a bylaw that yeah, does that apply to rock crushing as well? 
All construction. All construction. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. All right. So that being said, um, any more questions about on the from the board about construction stockpile and rock crush? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, well, more about the oversight. Um, if there is a pro if there was a problem getting an inspector, what triggers the hiring of an additional inspector to come in for? It's like a one day or one hour, two hour, three hour kind of project. I'm assuming if there's a violation, but uh, what triggers that? If uh, if Chuck had like says, well, I can't get to it this week, or if, is it if he feels he needs someone, he can get someone. Who makes the call, Chuck? He does. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. So moving on, identify the site work limits. So once again, the erosion and sedimentation control plans that are included clearly identify the limits of clearing, erosion control barriers, silt fence that needs to be in place. And it's clearly noted on the plans that all of those erosion control measures need to be in place before any site work occurs. Anyone from the board, please? Moving on from that. Um, Proximity to LNG gas plant and facilities, additional uh, traffic nearby. All right, that's an N. N. So I think well, I the additional think traffic is mitigated because we are limiting that access road as to only emergency, and then they'll only cross Wilson with construction vehicles. Um, to get to Rafferty, the extension, you know, the extension, and we'll go up and down Wilson. Yeah, I was just going to make the point that I think we already hashed out the traffic yeah. thing. I wouldn't want to rehash it again. Yes. Yeah. All right. So but the other side of that is making that emergency access road an outlet onto Wilson Street heading towards Ashland would take away the risks that we're talking about from Wilson Street Legacy Farm North intersection and put it up on to take that traffic and away from that situation. And the reason that this is brought up is that cars have electricity and moving parts that could spark an issue if there, if there is an issue. Uh, so less traffic in that intersection, the better. Well, and, and, I, and I think you had already said that the, on the first phase that the, that the, ac the emergency access road is going in and on the first phase anyway, right? Toward the end, the latter part of the uh, first, first phase. phase. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Do we know my point? Do, do, well, <laughs> I, I understand your point, but we we're going over something again, Frank. That we're well, on the checklist. I, I understand. Yep. So moving on to seven status um, of uh, conservation commission review and permitting. The commission has approved the project and issued an order of conditions. And have they been met? Well, that the project hasn't started yet. So right. They will be met certainly. The, the, that was provided in last week's packet. Right. I have a question um, uh, through you. Um, the stormwater management is going to be managed by the CONCOM. They only, their jurisdiction is only within the 100 foot buffer at the wetland. So the, we, we will manage, because the, the comments that we had, so they were satisfied from the stormwater management plan for their purposes. For their uh, and I just want to know that there aren't any open issues for our purposes from our engineer for the stormwater management. Bill, so could, could you elaborate on that? Um, so we reviewed the project to encompass the requirements for the Conservation Commission as well mm -hmm. as, uh, as your bylaws yeah. for stormwater management. So they've met. We, we've had some back and forth, um, and they've addressed all the comments that we had, and therefore the uh, commission was satisfied with that and issued the order of conditions. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, going on to eight. I had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, my question had to do with <coughs> the area of the heritage property that that drains into Wilson Street. Um, it was identified as 11 acres on, on their report. So <clears throat> my question is, um, should the, um, does that, there, there was no specific um, structures identified for that 11 acres. So my question is, does that 
11 acres rely on the existing failed infrastructure on Wilson Street? All right. First, uh, something in that statement really just kind of bumps me the wrong way, and that is this, is that you're, saying, you're calling it a failed system. Okay, I'll change the word. I'll say the existing <coughs> structure on Wilson Street that is, is um, continually draining onto Wilson Street. So my, my question is, does, does that 11 acres that you identified in your plan rely in any way Could you direct that towards us? towards the board and then we'll, do, we'll do direct that towards them. Does the 11 acres of their land that they identified in their drainage plan <clears throat> in any way rely on the existing infrastructure for drainage? When you say existing infrastructure, what are you referring to? Well, I didn't see any specific, for instance, other sections of their property, they identify specific basins to receive the water. But for the area that the 11 acres they identified that drains into Wilson Street, there were no specific structures called out. So the question is, All right. is, is that because they're relying on the existing structure? of the street and the existing, um, I don't know the technical term, but the existing basin that's there that is, that is currently oversubscribed for right. a better okay. word. All right. All right. Okay. And I'm going to have to stop you there because look, every that's time, that's a good question. It's a good, question. Uh, it's a good okay. question, but uh, please excuse me. It has me. to do with their land. I'm I just asking from, I understand, but from their point of view. I understand, but look, What's happening here is you're making a lot of blanket no, statements uh, about no, failures. No, no. no. I, I understand, but you're calling them failed. Please re refrain from calling I, re I rephrased that. Clip. Okay, because you're making inferences that aren't we quantified. Have, I, there is, I provided okay, a picture. Okay, why don't we let the, <laughs> I, I appreciate the question that. and we can answer the question. I think I understand the question. All right. And if I could, so this part of this open meadow and if you were to draw a drainage area divide, this area of the site that is open meadow today and will remain open meadow drains to Wilson Street. You can't change that. That's the way the topography has been forever. I think what she's saying is, is that going to continue? And the answer is yes. We're not changing anything in terms of the drainage characteristics of that meadow. What we are changing is the other drainage areas where we do need detention basins to mitigate the impervious surface that's added. If we were adding a parking area or buildings here, we would need something to mitigate the drainage within that watershed, if that's clear. So just one follow-up question. The <clears throat> if, if it, so, so you're not changing anything there, but, but um, since, since there is an existing problem there, um, at some point, um, and I think that's what we're going to cover 14th, on the 14th. 14th. We're with you. Yeah, right. we're with you on it. So that's being covered on the 14th. Right, but the um, wouldn't the, constru the the construction plans that I've seen for for the south um, state that that um, any flow from your property, um, regardless of whether um, it's, it's due to, a f to, to the failure of a structure beyond your property, it's still your responsibility. That's how I read it in the yep. plan. And that's why it's going to be addressed on the, on the 14th. We're going to talk about it. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, moving on to number eight. Additional town. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, there. Could you show me again where are the basins and, and, and the what I'm getting at is um, if we're adding all this stormwater into these stormwater basins, is there any chance that it's going to break out like at the bottom of uh, Wilson Street? You know what I'm saying? So you're adding all this extra water into a, into a specific basin. It's going to drain down, and then it goes somewhere, and 
I guess my question is, is there a chance that any of that water could drain down and then break out back into the street? I'll use this schematic plan. It's probably the best, easiest one to understand. Uh -huh. So generally speaking, the site drains to this wetland area in the center of the site. The yeah. basins that we are proposing are located adjacent to that wetland resource area. So in other words, runoff is piped to these basins where it discharges to the wetland area and ultimately everything flows to this point. Gotcha. So there are controls on site, swales, uh, catch basins, mm -hmm. drain manholes that convey that flow. But the basins, there are no basins immediately adjacent to the roadway. Okay. And again, just to reiterate, the entire system has been designed in accordance with uh, Mass EDP stormwater regulations, peer mm -hmm. reviewed by Bay Group. Thank you. To that, to that point, uh, we do have conditions about um, no salt uh, to be used and uh, fertilizers, uh, artificial, I'm sorry, pesticides to be used uh, or fertilizers actually uh, because of the watershed for the, for the wetland. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to defer this over to Elaine because I, I, I remember something different on, the, yeah. on that, 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 that. That never went through as far as pesticides <coughs> and, and stuff like that. Can you elaborate on that, Elaine? That being other sections of, of Legacy Farms? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, all of it, particularly, particularly this section because of the uh, reservoir for Ashland. Because I'm, I'm not familiar, Frank, either with the fact that you're saying that we okay. have a restriction on, on pesticides. That, that, that has not come across <coughs> our table. I mean, it, it was discussed, but it has never been enacted as a, if, from my recollection, from the time that I've been on the board and, and previous to that, hearing of that topic. All right, let's talk about it. If, uh, it's not, for, it, it, it's not. I don't think that's within yes. the scope of this, but one, Elaine, can yeah. you just. I, I don't think, but it's not within our purview of the planning board on related to that. It's yes. typical it's a, for a conservation commission to right. have correct. a condition. That's right. Correct. It's not yeah, within our show. I was going to say conservation has already looked at that. Right. And whatever they've determined we need is in the order of conditions. Right. I would so. like us to consider that we look at the amount of salt uh, and pesticides and fertilizer for that we'd be adding to the watershed which affects the reservoir in Ashland. Okay, I right. And that's conservation. I understand that. That's conservation. That. That's another group that has been appointed to have that responsibility. Well, we we're talking about stormwater management. Right, but we're talking about the water management, not what's in the water management. So I'm not well, going to interfere the same way we wouldn't. I'm going to stop you there. I understand you've made the point. Thank you. I'm going to move on. Through the chair. Yeah. I just wanted to re ask for Fon's question. Just a little different way. So the point, the last point you made just concerns me a little bit that everything's going to end up down because that is really a curve in Wilson Street. Is there any concern about the flow going down towards the street there where the street crosses? Again, what we have to do in accordance with the stormwater management regulations is analyze pre-development conditions and make sure that we don't exceed uh, more rates of runoff from the site under the post-development con condition. That's why we have detention basins. They temporarily hold water back to mimic what happens under existing conditions. Okay, so I mean, there'll be elevation from keeping it from going up onto the road yes. at the end there. Right. And, and Phil, from a beta perspective, you guys are okay with that stormwater mitigation? You don't feel that there's any potential for overflow onto Wilson Street? Because there's a couple bends there, and it's pretty steep, right? The topography lends itself for that water if it's not built right, go right over Wilson. So we had the same question? Yeah. In which we asked the uh, engineer to provide additional calculations for the culverts that cross the road. So they provided the calculations to our satisfaction. You guys report it? Thank you. So sorry, that. just to be clear, a follow-up question to you. So there are culverts that go into the road there? There are three locations where there are culverts that Could you just point those out to us, please? Uh, there's a small one, I believe it's in this location. Actually, it could be here. It's a 12-inch culvert. Okay. There are twin, I want to say 24-inch culverts that cross under Howe Street in this location. And then there's an old stone culvert in this location. So there are three different points okay. that we want to cross. And we analyzed each and every one of those points. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Additional town boards, uh, town departments, board comments, and recommendations. I have a point of order. 
Rubbish yeah. rules. Yeah. Um, all right, so the chair is in project lead. don't want discussion on the matter, but I'm fully within my bounds to make a motion. And I'd like to make a motion, the following motion, that we, uh, on this parcel of this project, that we limit salt, pesticides, and fertilizers from uh, the property. We have a second. So I just want to say, I'm, I'm not seconding it, but I do celebrate the, um, the interest. I have, um, I, have a, I have a fondness for crabgrass and no pesticides in my own yard. <laughs> uh, it stays short and holds the dirt down. I don't know. My standards are different. But um, uh, I, I have very, very great confidence in the other boards in town to do their job. And this was the purview of the CONCOM. Um, and, uh, and I would like to think that they did their job. I but I, I, I do appreciate um, the intention behind it to protect the water supply. Yeah, I think we all do. Yep. Yes. So hearing no second, I move that we move on to. But there was discussion, so I want to assert my right to discussion. That's already happened. <laughs> there is a difference between stormwater management and conservation commission's responsibilities. And there's an overlap, too. We also have an overlap with our responsibilities as neighbors to the town of Ashland for the water supply, as well as the water that we get from Ashland. So I don't want to be poisoning the well here, um, but I made my motion. It wasn't seconded. And uh, do we I, know? Do, I do have a comment. Do we know? Going to share for the discussion. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Frank, I might suggest that you write a letter to the conservation commission with your concerns. I mean. Just as an individual? Uh, again, it, it, there's stormwater management, our purview. There is w the watershed issues, which is conservation commission. Sometimes they overlap. In this instance, we're talking about the main, just talk, there's three outlets onto the property of the state park that this water is going to be draining down to. It's, we're adding salt, pesticides, and fertilizer, which causes problems, as we've seen in Lake Mastinoc with fertilizer. Um, but I thought we had something like this in, in, in our in our conditions, but we don't. Yeah. I made a motion. It wasn't seconded. Okay. I have I was just so so to his point, he's Sorry. just making a suggestion, suggestion to you. You don't have to right. follow it. I can. So, no, no, thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, moving on to. So, go ahead. So go ahead. This is some, there's some yeah. discussion here. I'd like mm -hmm. to kind of just yeah. be able to, to kind of air it out. I think other mm -hmm. members also have some mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, mine is, Frank, I think it's a very valid point. I mean, I think we all are concerned about this. Um, have you, did you serve on the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. in the past? Right. So I think you speak with some credibility here. So I think it's important that we do vet this. Um, I'll look to Elaine, I'll look to Phil. Again, that might be outside of the purview here. Um, but I'd like to feel that, you know, I think CONCOM has a, <coughs> a view on things. And I'm not sure it's a overarching view of all the elements that Frank touched on. And I think it's important that we, where there's things that aren't discussed as overlap, at least address and acknowledge that. So thank you for doing that. And you know, if there are experts, Elaine, if you have some insight or Phil, I'd like to get a comfort level around the fact that there's going to be minimal impact from salt, pesticides, erosion type material that would be flowing into the reservoir. Does that exist? Right before there's any comments from the public, Phil, I don't know if you have anything or Elaine, if you have any insights on that. So um, the project is designed according to the standards, uh, there's 10 standards for <coughs> stormwater management um, from DEP. And um, they include a number of best management practices and the, the, the project has included a number of best management practices that include opportunities to collect and um, have collect uh, se sediments and, and pollutants in, in, in this system. They include um, deep sump catch basins, which collects a lot of sediment, which particulates uh, attach to them as well. Um, so there'd be a, a lot of you, maybe some topsoils and, and, uh, and other things. And then you have uh, uh, sediment traps, 
before <coughs> it enters into your infiltration basins. And during a small events where you have the most amount of pollutants, um, those, those are infiltrated into the ground. And the soil is just like septic systems are um, treat, treat the water <coughs> and, and the groundwater. Anything that's uh, in excess of that will overflow, as was indicated, in, in a controlled manner to the wetlands. The wetlands themselves act as, um, I want to say, cl cleaning. They, they have a certain amount of uh, ability to remove pollutants from, from water before, before it would get to the, 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 um, the reservoir. Now, having said that, if you want to, you know, restrict the, you know, I, I think that's that's a concern that the conservation commission. I, I wasn't at the meeting, so, but I wasn't part of that dis discussion. But I know that they look at those kind of things. So I don't I don't know what the order of conditions says relative to those. So, uh, you the chair. Uh, <laughs> in your experience, do you see that the wetland would denitrify any of the stormwater that's that's coming in? Uh, because what I'd be what I'm worried about is um, eutrophication of the of the water supply. So if we're having excessive nitrogen coming through through fertilizers, would the wetlands kind of take that up before it discharged into the into the lake? So you know, obviously the the the, <coughs> the um, landscaper is going to have to make you know be responsible for that. And, um, but again, the the amount of it, it really would depend on, on how 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 much fertilizer is, is applied. Um, so, mm -hmm. but I mean that's a problem that all all communities face in terms of. Chair, the chair, I have a question for Phil. Do you know off the top of your head? Um, what percentage of the flow will go through the culverts onto the other side of the road? At any given time, David? Yeah, rough average. I mean, is it most of it going to be absorbed in the drainage pond and stay on this side of? Wouldn't that depend on the weather? Street? So the stormwater management standards have thresholds based on the soil type. And there's a certain requirement based on how much impervious area you're you have on your site. So, for instance, uh, A soil, you gotta, you got to infiltrate 0.6 inches of runoff. And, and it goes down based on the soil. So I think it's B or C soil. Let me just rephrase the question because you can kind of cut the clock. <laughs> well, let's just go in, a typical, well, in a typical well, spring, well, let me just ask this question. No, let me tell you, okay. let me explain to you. <laughs> sure. Okay, because oh, yeah. st storms are not consistent. Right. You don't have like, that's all a half inch storms. Question. If you had all half inch storms, there'd be no runoff. So I was going to qualify the question and just say on a typical spring, typical New England spring, would you expect a lot of the water to go under the road? So this spring or two years ago spring? So it's I'm not looking for an exact answer. I'm I'm looking for a so so here's here's, a, here's a another thing. Lot. So the more water that falls, <laughs> yeah. the less concentrated the pollutant is. So like if you have a, a, you have, you know, like a summer, summer uh, thunderstorm, where it hasn't rained for a while, the pollutants. Oh, sorry, but I wasn't even drink, I'm not even bringing in pollutants. I'm just talking volume of water. What's staying on the south side of the property, roughly, percentage-wise? And you could say a small storm versus a big storm. I mean, are you saying, like, are you saying, could, would you say, like, um, on a typical rainstorm, that there's going to be a... 50% flowing under the road to the other side? Is that, too, is that hard to answer? Am I, I mean, yes. yes. Okay. Because, so because. Uh, I'm just trying to get a feel for how much water will be flowing into can the I, lake. Can I just touch on something? I sure. have the order of conditions. Oh, and 77 use of sodium chloride de-icing compound shall be minimized throughout the project site wherever and whenever safety conditions allow. Use of sodium chloride substitutes and I'm not going to go into that thing because it explains that. Uh, 78 pesticides and or herbicides of any type should not be used for the establishment or maintenance of landscape plantings or lawns. 
and then there's a section on that. Uh, so a lot of that is already in there, conditions. Okay. So we're covered. Yeah, we're, so we're covered. And I we know, is there anything about fertilizers? Yes. That's yes. Yes. yes, that's okay. what I was doing. I just didn't go through the, okay, all the detailed okay. description of the chemicals in the fertilizers. Just one final comment, so I just wanted to say, Sorry if I put you in a position that you couldn't answer. I was just trying to figure out how to ask the right question. So, so yeah, well, the, the problem is, still, still water is, is not very predictable. Long, right? Okay, so we, we use really Thank statistics you. to do you know, the safety yeah. factors okay. and all that stuff. So, so I, I withdraw my motion. I, I know we had it covered someplace, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that John found it. Thank you. And thank you for recognizing that we had it covered. Absolutely. Thank you for sending. Yeah. So, that's, so that's, that's great. Good job. So now that that's covered, go ahead. Hi, Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. So um, I had one question. There was one condition that was recommended by the um, having to do with uh, twin 30-inch pipes that were originally, I guess, draining onto Wilson Street. So um, my question was, um, can you point out where they were and then how you changed that? Go ahead, sure, please. Absolutely. Uh, you're only seeing part of the picture here, but there's, this is road A. Essentially, it's this leg of the project. Behind this row of units, there's a swale. So if you can imagine water running down this swale, our original design brought water to this point. It crossed under what was the emergency access road. Now it's just a driveway. We had two 30-inch pipes that were conveying, picking up that flow, and it was essentially being brought around this corner. Phil at Beta brought up uh, the fact that that might cause some uh, additional water on Wilson Street. What we have done, you can see it on this plan, the majority of that swale is now being picked up in structures and piped through the site such that rather than water being sent to this point, it's actually being piped through the site to the wetland. So that's, that's, I believe, what she's talking about. And again, that was a comment that Beta had made that we addressed. Thank you for the clarity. And just for reference purposes, I don't know where, if you're interested, there's a lot of discussion in the order of conditions for uh, outflow of materials during construction, et cetera. So a lot of what we have discussed is addressed in the already order of conditions. It was in your packet for the previous meeting. Okay. okay. And that's where I saw it. Yeah. You have a follow-up question? Uh, I was just wondering if that was by gravity. What, were the, the all right. Thank you. Uh, to, to, the, to her question, was that derived by gravity? The 30-inch piping going out. I'm not sure I understand the question. Quite honestly, waters all by gravity. Uh, I'm, You're not pumping. Honestly, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Pumping. You're not pumping yeah. it. Yes. It is, it is, uh, thank you, Phil. Thank you for that. With all that being said, any other questions from the board on this topic? All right, moving on. Additional, that was um, additional town departments and board comments, I believe, yes? And recommendations, yeah. Well, Adrian? Uh, well, wait, so the other board comments were DPW and design review board, right? Yes. So will we, in the conditions, will we put the recommendations of the design review board? Mm -hmm. There we go. I do have a lingering question, because I think we heard from the fire department, um, and I don't know how uh, we resolve um, the fire department's statement that he, he isn't sure that he can meet response times. So I... Mm -hmm. um, Steve, could you come up and say hello? <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> State your name, please, just for the record. <laughs> Hello, Steve Slammon. Um, poor hearing, so I didn't quite hear what you said. So I recall at one of our first hearings that you said, honestly, I'm not sure we can meet response times um, with this development. And if I misheard you, I'd, I want to know what your what your position is. Sure, I think I refer to just our capacity to mm -hmm. serve, and we were talking about in general a lot of the projects that are currently going on. Um, I have a request for two firefighters in this year's budget. Um, it doesn't quite match up with the needs that I had been mentioning and asked for. Um, Mr. McDowell made some comments, and I believe there is something in the paperwork for 
um, assistance to public safety. So I just don't know how it'll all pan out. It's in the, your request is in the budget is currently in the budget that's going to town meeting. The approved I, appropriation budget. Yeah, right now there's um, two firefighter slots in there. Um, I have um, commented that I uh, need more than two firefighters to handle the uh, current demand in the town. So um, I think there are some other avenues. I don't know how it'll all play out. I want to understand if and I I realize I'm putting you on the spot and I. That's okay. Okay. Um, uh, if you get the two firefighters at town meeting, as we expect, it's in the, in the budget, that is what we hope for. Mm -hmm. um, you are still not able to meet the current demand? Mm -hmm. Correct. So I'm struggling with, with that reality from our perspective, mm -hmm. I guess is, is my point. Elaine. I just wanted to note that in the Fifth Amendment to the Host Community mm -hmm. Agreement, there were payments yeah. to cover. Yeah. So uh, prior to um, the first dwelling unit occupancy permit, there's a payment of $120,000. And then there's another payment before the 90th and another payment before the 180th. So there's three payments of $120,000 mm -hmm. to deal with public safety response. Is it possible for us to condition the way that's directed to the town? No. See? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's for that See, purpose. That was <laughs> I'm just saying. I just add. I know it's for the purpose. By the way, it's for the purpose of public safety and fire fire safety, right? And so it it, it makes sense. And I don't mean to sure. suggest that um, other boards won't do the right thing. I'm just saying that we have a real um, identified con problem. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, you know, I guess the rubber is meeting the road, and I can apologize all day long to this particular developer that it meets the road here. Um, but I just, I don't think we can ignore that gap, and I don't know how to, I don't know how to fix it. Well, I think it's. Go ahead. I wanted to add that when we all went to the citizens uh, training Did you collaborative. Pull the mic? Sorry. Four of us went to the citizens training planning planning collaborative in March, and we heard about some Commonwealth grants, and I can't recall the name of it, for communities that were growing particularly quickly, yes. and that you could get grants for public safety, like to get a new ambulance or things like that. So I don't know. We have submitted an application. We have submitted. Yeah. Okay, great. And, and I don't know if we should write a letter to the selectmen since they manage the budget, too, to express that, you know, these things are available. being approved. And, and if we need more firefighters or policemen, we need to so if we have process that we need that. <coughs> I'm sorry, Amy, I didn't mean to talk to you. If we have submitted a grant, is it for in general or is it for a particular purpose? They have not identified yet what grants will be available, okay. but we've asked to be qualified as one of the communities who communities who is eligible, eligible for those grants, mm -hmm. which we understand that some of them will be for public safety. Yes. And I, okay. and I think I to that point, Amy, that wasn't it stated that the towns that were, were the growing exponentially, um, that they were like in, in the top priority of, Correct. of that? We definitely so, qualify. So, mm -hmm. so we're, in, we're in a qualifying position for that to happen. So. Well, we qualify to be, get, be identified, which is what the application is. Right. Um, and then we would have to, I believe, apply for additional grants. So it's not, you know. Um, it's not solid. but It's, it, it's it, awesome, it, but it's not an answer to and this again, conundrum necessarily. Yeah. So and to that point with Chief, is, is that he's asking for two. He could use more, and I'm sure that town meeting has a lot of bearing over that decision making and and what you need for going forward i would like to bridge that gap as, as best we could but i think in this situation where it, it's outside the scope of what we're talking about right now i understand so, yep. so thank you for for that steve i appreciate but just that. a point of order yes i think amy is suggesting that we um make write a, a letter to the selectmen i'd like to second that yeah, it's, okay you here um, I would too, and, and I think that we should probably see the letter before we in, send it off to make sure we're um, well, happy with it. Yeah, but with there it. is, mm -hmm. there is the money that is um, dedicated for this purpose, and we are. I mean, I think I think it's our responsibility to communicate pretty clearly Where that we, we are want. seeing um, a repetitive stress situation, um, and we want to make sure that. Um, our fire department, any department, knows that we're listening to them. We don't want, we can't ignore your feedback and your input. So just to follow up on that, Chief, mm -hmm. under the assumption that you get the two at town meeting, what is the continued current gap 
that you would need and have you looked at that maybe one or two or three years out just so that this board can get a sense going forward not for this project but just going forward where that sure. potential shortfall would be I did try to do some projections and um, I think just rules of thumb are great is like for the fire department it's uh, generally looked at about two firefighters per thousand in your population so you can kind of it's pretty easy to track our population growth over the last few years the only anomaly that we got and what I, I explained to the community I think I fell short last year was that the number of requests per thousand has dramatically gone up in the last 10 years and I'm not trying to tell people don't make a request I want our people to we're here to help stop a problem early but it's gone up significantly the per thousand requests so I think that's why we fell behind last year so much and I told you that the data that I had there were about 300 calls the year before that we ran short and sending out an effective force to um, this year it went up to about 354 calls so um, that's where I'm explaining to you that I'm just kind of losing uh, or falling behind on that we are we did handle additional volume successfully but that gap um, not sending adequate forces to the number of calls is what worried me. Mm -hmm. I looked at the two, four, and six we modeled out. Um, four was as big as I dared ask in any given budget year, no matter what we were looking at. Um, this budget has two, and there probably are some um, options that are on the table. Um, I just don't know that they'll how they fall. Mm -hmm. So Mr. McDowell's um, money coming in is one of the options and, um, and the town may have other options grants whatever I just I kind of got to bring the need forward mm -hmm. and Thank I'd like you. to just say okay. too that in a, in a tough budget year I'm very glad that they preserved that request sure. um, so you know I uh, kudos to everybody who's been working this very difficult problem and to that point I, I we have a motion to send a letter in a second so I I would like to have I don't that. think do we need a formal motion no, for the yeah. allocations of those monies. Yeah, we don't need a formal motion. I'll Just draft a letter it. and we'll bring. All right, is that the next? We have consensus. It's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Appreciate the support. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. On that I just point, wanted to add one point. Follow up. Sorry. Okay. But I know we discussed this about a year ago with the police chief in front of us, and I think mm -hmm. it was the fire chief as well. And we asked them for some statistics okay. about the ten last ten or fifteen years. So we can put that in our master plan and, and actually get those numbers out in front of people so you can see the growth. So just want to remind I want to thank Elaine for having our applications and for grants and things. You guys do a really good job with that. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you. Okay, moving on now, please. Um, age restriction document review. You got something for us? Uh, other than we will be in full compliance with the already um, adopted age restrictions that the town has passed for this community. And we have, we have vetted that pretty well, I, I believe. Um, uh, Elaine, why don't you just touch what was in our material? I closed the, the master idea. deed, so it's right. in the master deed that was, was enclosed. And then DHCD, of course, will be reviewing all the deed writers for the, for the units. And the yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, community For the record, DHCD is the Department of, of Housing and Community Development. That's a state. <laughs> yes, and we'll work with the um, the applicant to prepare the necessary paperwork to go to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the backup. To the chair, just a process question. Do you. Are you good? No, she's. You're good. Go ahead. Yeah. So, did um, do you think we could? Do we uh, try? Or is our goal to try to get through these last few and come to a vote today? Yes. yes. Okay. That that is our goal. So, yes, come on up. <laughs> Thank you. I just have a couple on the questions about the 55 plus. Okay. While we're on that. Um, is, it's probably a stupid question, sorry. No, no stupid question. It's, um, is 20% of the development exempt from the over 55 requirement? I think that's the state law. Um, Roy, can you do it? Why would I have a lane? Why are you? I'm not familiar with. Okay, uh, that's what I read a lot. <laughs> that 50, uh, this 20% of uh, is exempt normally, this mass state law. I'm not familiar with it. No, no. that's not true? No. Okay. I'm sure you're well more, well more versed than I am. So the question is, is some, would some of the units not be yes. restricted? Yes. I think they're restricted in the master deed um, okay. for this project. All right, that answers the question. Okay, and then um, 
The other question is, could the 55 plus limitation be removed when um, market conditions change? I've heard that that could They'd have to go back to town meeting at the very least to do that because it's in the zoning bylaw that okay. there be a certain percentage of affordable yeah. units here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Community impacts and mitigation. Um, I think <laughs> we're, we've been um, clubbing that one to death. Uh, and uh, I think we're pretty close to realizing that we can go through that unless somebody has something to add to that that has not already been discussed. That being said, uh, yeah, moving. Yes, oh, uh, yes, come on up. Um, I do have a question regarding impacts, and um, I'm wondering what ever happened to the suggestion from me a few years back about performing a, a balloon test to determine the actual CNU impact. And um, as a condition prior to approval, perhaps this might be a good idea to run. And um, that way you could determine it. The, you know, uh, whether it's negative, whether it's actually going to be detrimental to the view shed, which is my opinion, but for this ball to actually be able to determine, in reality, not looking at the, that blueprint there, but see what's going to happen mm -hmm. to people in the state park. We've got over 300,000 people a year use the park, and they look up that hill. If you run a simple test, the board could then decide that this development would not be negative or that it would be positive. Either way, without the test, how do you know? You're just looking at that. You're not looking at the reality on the ground. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Mr. McDonald. Under the original Osmo, the actually the buildings on this site could have been as tall as 40 feet. These these homes were well under the 35 feet zoning, and the architecture in the screening trees that we're proposing, we think, will more than mitigate that. Thank you. Phil, do you have any comment on that at all? Sorry to throw you underneath that, but. Um. I, I think it could, uh, on projects where that's a, a concern, I think the, a condition could be added that the, um, once, once the development is nearing completion and there's gaps in the, in the uh, landscaping, that, that, that could be provided. I think the, uh, I think that was actually stated previously, but I think that's the best way to, um, God against that. It is there is a fairly uh, it when I when I drove up Wilson Street there is a fairly uh, dense um, uh, forestation at least at least when I when I drove up it between uh, the road and the, and the back row of those houses uh, I couldn't even see the treatment plant that's in between there. So, uh, but you didn't. Is. But you didn't go from the state parks. Um, vantage points and look through no. to, to, to see so you wouldn't have any idea of, of how that looks all right I, and I and I and I I say that did you want to add something well yes I could you come up please if, if any of the board was to actually take I guess part of the problem here is there's a disconnect between people sitting at the table and the reality on the ground if you were to actually go and fish at the reservoir, walk the trails or anything, stand at the boathouse, uh, on the pier at the boathouse, you can see a tremendous amount when you do that walk. And my concern is that decisions are going to be made here without a true understanding of the long-term impacts on our community. It's a resource that's getting devalued in this process. And I would emphasize caution before the vote, because once you make this vote, it's irreversible. That's all I'm urging. Thank you, and I understand that. And go ahead, Mr. McDowell. And then I'd like to say something to that point. I think when we talked about this earlier, we've added a lot of trees down below. We've acquiesced this evening to, to appease some of the concerns of the neighbors and the board. 
to add additional trees. I mean, I've never heard of a project where it, it's got to be can't seen from anywhere. And the reality is, you'll see little peekaboos of these homes, I and mean, that's not unreasonable. And you've got a tremendous amount of forest between the, the public park and this site. And might you see a house in the distance? You possibly could, but I think it's unrealistic to think that we have to 100% screen every home from every direction. We've added a significant amount of trees this evening, and I think we've more than satisfied what I think is reasonable. Thank you. And, and to that point, I would like to make a statement about my knowledge uh, as being a landscaper and, and a uh, landscape design uh, at some point in my tenure is that trees don't stop growing. Foliage doesn't stop growing. Things, don't, things come back. Things, things make their way for, for shielding. I, I, I think, you know, you, you, you make a, a statement about <coughs> 10 years from now or, or whatever that, that, you, that those things are going to be an, an ugly eyesore or there's, they're already an eyesore now. I think through mitigation over time, the growth of, of new, 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 new growth is going to, to, to establish itself and it's going to start to take over again, just like, just like every other development that I've known. Uh, yeah, to the chair, just one, I want to make one comment also that this, this town does a very good job of going out and purchasing available land. If you look at around Lake Whitehall, they purchased a bunch of property um, I'm not, I can't remember the exact board that does that, but I would suggest that you work with them if you're concerned about the uh, tree line around the state park. Well, my, my concern, Uncle, is, is that um, I appreciate the developer's position and what he intends to do, and I know that it's not his intention to be detrimental to the town and our quality of life, but a byproduct of this development impacts the community I live in, and it impacts all the visitors that come to town. It has an impact. And what I'm trying to say is that I, I'm not clear I, that, the, that why it has to be that a, a major decision like this has to be made in, in a rush and be forced through, and that the concerns of our community, our neighborhood, um, deserves some respect and to be heard and some of our concerns should be acted on. I, I appreciate the developer's gesture on, in that regard. I'm simply asking for a reasonable consideration. Thank you. You Just have sorry, one quick yes. comment yes. to reach with that. So unfortunately, we can't base our decision on opinions. A lot of our decisions oh. are whether they, the, the guidelines, the the bylaws are, are fouled, so I just want to point out that we don't have a lot of leeway in that as well. Exactly. Uh, wait, wait. Can I? Can I just say you Hold have on. to be at the microphone? Everybody slow down, please. Mic microphone yes. if you're talking. But. Yes. All right. So to, to, do, you, do you understand his questioning, I mean his statement? Yes, I do. Okay. okay. I do. All right. Now, Frank, go ahead. On <clears throat> Kruger Street, you can't see from uh, Route 85. You can't see it from the State <laughs> Park. Maybe in the winter you might see a window or two at night. Uh, and that's the idea that I believe is what you're referring to as the nature of the neighborhood. Uh, I think the same, following the same protocol with this new development, you won't be, I don't believe you'll be able to see any part of it from the state park, from the boathouse, from the lower uh, reservoir, from the, uh, from the upper reservoir. Uh, but I would like to have a condition uh, that if, if that is a, situation that we deal with it uh, have the developer uh, deal with it with the extra screening if it's if it does happen I just wanted um, I assume as an abutter the state park or the state received notification of these hearings right did they send a, they did not send us any written comments no. or concerns no. thank you so go ahead. I had a second point but I don't know please, if you, okay this is a little bit unrelated, but um, on community impacts um, on the schools, I know this development's not going to have any children, and if they do, there'll be a penalty. In our last packet, we didn't we didn't mention uh, it publicly, but the public is interested that um, there are now 228 school children in Legacy Farms, and if they do reach over 266 in the first six years, there will be a financial um, payment to the town. And so I wanted to make sure that was said out loud that the public could hear. 
But I know this, this part of the development is not going to have any children. It's deed restricted. <laughs> okay, thank you. So through the chair, and Frank, just to respond to your point, uh, I do think setting up a, a, an additional condition on the developer is a little bit onerous. I, I'm very much in approval of their recommendation to put trees down below. There is, it's pretty steep, right? And I think from the lower reservoir, you're not gonna see it. But I do think potentially from the upper reservoir, you could see some of the ones in phase one at the higher, at the higher areas of the, of the development. I'm not sure what the developer could do to put additional trees that are not a buddy on belt and the suspenders. I don't. I don't think it's a, an issue. I think that just in case. Mm. I hear you. I, I, so I'm mm. respectful of that. I mean, you can't. You can't see the gas tanks. Those are three huge buildings, and they're not that much yeah. further. So you can't see those. It's the same vista, uh, same woods. Anyway, I think I'm comfortable with what they initially proposed some additional trees down we'll see. Not we'll see. Um, I just I just want to understand the process with the um, the master plan special per um, permit amendment process. Sorry, I'm getting tired. Um, we haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah. We're not Oh we're not on that no, yet. Because no. I don't see it on the agenda. It, it, it is. It's, it's uh, eleven it's compliance with master plan. Okay. So um, but just speaking to what you were just saying that uh, what you can see you will definitely see the ones that have been pushed in the new um, amendment right up against the state park when from all along Wilson Street. And I'm not sure, um, you know, if, how much you'll see them from the state park or the other ones because, like Chris said, when we never had a balloon test. We don't really know, you know. Them being 35 foot as opposed to 40 is, is a little different in my opinion, but um, we don't we don't know but they are up on a hill I've been you know I've been stood on that hill and it's like it's a gorgeous view of the reservoir but if you're seeing the whole reservoir the whole reservoir is seeing you so thank you thank you the chair oh can I say one more thing oh no oh, no we're not on the chair I'm supportive of uh, Frank's idea that you know once uh, once once this is, is built out if it turns out that we we can see um, I don't, you know, uh, having a condition that I think looking if we had to need to add additional screening, I don't, I, I support that. Thank you. Um, Elaine, has there been a precedent of, of that nature in the past? That probably. Probably. Mr. McDowell? My concern with that is it's, it's such an open-ended issue. I, I right. think it would be actually quite dangerous even trying to finance the project because a bank would look at that and say, well, what if you can't meet that? I mean, someone brought up a perfect point. What if from a distance you could see a roof and you need a tree that was 50 feet tall because of the angle of repose? And I think it's unreasonable for any project to say, gee, we don't want to see it from anywhere. I think the fact that we've added screening trees on Wilson Street We've added additional screening trees coming up the corner. You know, uh, Vin has made a comment that, gee, once we see the homes in place, we may want to add a few more trees. So I think, I think you've got a developer and a builder who want to make it right, but at the same time can't have handcuffs that make it impossible to achieve the end result. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. McDonald. So can I ask for a potential wording to cover what you just said as a condition? <coughs> Well, number one, we have the existing plans on the trees on the plan. Yep. Um, Mike has outlined an area mm -hmm. for additional trees, and I think maybe something to the effect that uh, the builder will use uh, reasonable efforts to potentially add additional screening trees where it, it seems appropriate. Something to that effect. At least it gives you something to hang your hat on to come back and say, gee, Vin, by the way, remember you said you'd consider this? Now that we see that, please add three trees here or four trees there. You get something to hang out on. Is that, that, is at the that same time, that's it acceptable to you, sir? Yeah, exactly. That's fine. That's I think that's what Frank was saying, isn't it? Okay. Okay. As long as, the, as, long as the wording is, a, is amenable to everybody. But worded my family, family. yes. That's fine. We, thank, we, we thank, thank you for that, Mr. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we move on to compliance with the master plan um, special permit. Uh, 
I'm, I'm going to defer that over to Elaine. Elaine. Do you want to touch on that? That is number 11, compliance with the master plan special permit. So the um, the first page of the, the voting guide and draft conditions has those um, those standards there for the board to, to consider. And the change to the master plan special permit is only the change to the buildable area. So it's not really a change to the permit itself. It's a change to the concept plan that was approved with that master plan special permit. So it's the shifting of the buildable area that you're so considering. The, the yellow and green. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are the criteria. Do you want to review the criteria? Do you want to do that? You want me to? Uh, I'll, I'll review the criteria for you just so that we have that. Actually, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Using your team. Mr. Project Lead, could I ask at the point of uh, order, could yes. we have the uh, chart be put up on to uh, uh, the board for the rest of the audience to see? The chart of? All the shifting of the, of the land. The yellow yeah, and the, the color. Buildable area. Buildable area. Buildable area. Buildable area. Buildable. What's the yellow? The yellow one. It's this one. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's the wrong one. That was an effort. This one, right? Yeah. I think so. I thought we had that earlier. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, that's it. All right. believe, Thank you. I believe that there were six criteria within the master plan special permit. Um, the first one, master plan complies with the provisions of this article and of the design guidelines. Number two, the master plan serves the purpose of the Osma district as described in 210-162 and will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this chapter. Number three, the impact of the development activities shown on the master plan is anticipated to be of benefit to the town. Number four, the major intersections and roadways providing access to the Osma district will continue to operate at an acceptable level of service based on the anticipated impact of vehicular traffic from any previously approved uses within the Osma district that will remain plus all new proposed development within the Osmond District. Number five, the master plan provides adequately for the convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the Osmond District and in relation to streets, property, or improvements outside of the Osmond District. And number six, the master plan provides for the adequacy of methods of disposal of sewage refuge and other wastes, provision of utilities, and the methods of drainage for surface water and seasonal flooding, if any, and protection of water resources for the town. Thank you. Did I capture everything correctly? You did. Are there any questions to the special um, master plan special permit approval criteria from either the board members or members of the public? I, I guess could the developer just go over briefly why the why the change in the area? I think we discussed it in an earlier meeting, but just a, a brief summary. Yep. Could I could we get a brief summary of of why the shift of, of the of the master plan? Well, as you all may recall, at one time this piece was zoned for commercial purposes, mm -hmm. and we went to. Town meeting the first time around, I think it was for 210 or 240, I forget. You know, we did not achieve approval for that. We came back to the community and we came back to town meeting with a proposal for this buildable area for 180 units. And this is the plan that we went with at that time. The area that you see in sort of a lime green color, we've actually shifted for two reasons. One, it conforms to the new plan that we brought to town meeting, and at the same time, we shifted it after having extensive conversations with the planning board and multiple consultants. And, we, and the decision was made to put in the gas lanterns and everything shifted for that purpose. I think I remember that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the gas lanterns are all in the yellow area, which is why you moved, right? Correct. Yeah. The gas lanterns are in that yellow area in the bottom of the map. Yes, correct. And so you moved away from? Correct. Okay. Roy, can you stay there? So for the home audience and people here, 
Uh, the yellow area is the former buildable lot that we voted on in 2014 town meeting. Actually, and no, it was on 2015. Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the earlier the one. Yes. The shift from the commercial use to the Correct. 180 age restricted. Um, the so again, the, what we voted on was the yellow area and not the darker green area. Correct. W which town meeting are you referring to? I just said 2015. One where it passed by one vote. The, the 2015 pretty much it covers the gray area, and I, I I actually think I'm not exactly sure where the lines are, but it's it's very close to what we're proposing. Yes. <coughs> But my point is, is that what was voted on town meeting is a little bit different. And what was voted on and approved was the yellow area on both um, section four and, and one, two, and three. And what was added in was some section four and one, two, and three also have additional sections. Actually, the way to look at it is the area in gray was part of that town meeting vote. Unchanged. Say again? I, the area gray is not changed. Yeah, the gray, the gray is, is the gray is it's only the green that's I'm talking about what's being changed. The green. Right. The darker green is being added, the lighter green is being removed. Um, yes. Why wasn't the darker green section of the land incorporated in the original? The darker well, again, green. Well, again, it was, at that time, it was nothing more than a concept plan. It wasn't an engineered plan. Correct. It well, was you knew the property. I mean, you've had the well, property it, for until you Until you actually do right. finite design details, you don't know exactly where your layout's going to be. That's what this sure. process, site plan sure. review, is what makes that correct determination. Sure. But <coughs> excuse me. When you're balancing out what goes to conservation restriction, what gets buildable, that's part of that. But we're talking about the MSPS, and that was something we voted on, particularly at 2015. And the question is, well. You're, you're using actually using less land than you had originally planned in 2015. Correct. That, that's my point. Yes. Almost, almost three years less. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Terry Anthony, 22 Kruger Road. Um, so my feeling is this is where a lot of the neighborhood's concerns are, is that Green Strip that borders Wilson Street and the State Park area. And so I mentioned it at the first meeting. I'm still feeling like it's, it is, it, there is going to be an issue in terms of the size of this development and the encroachment onto view sites, trees. And I'm wondering. I'm wondering if the question that you asked at the first meeting about this development being too big, or could it be seen, could it, could it be looked at to be smaller, could be addressed? Do the chair, if I could respond. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my point is that 180 units were approved for a lot of land uh, as depicted by the light green, or the yellowish section, and including the gray section. Uh, that land is not buildable entirely because of the blast circle. It's not a design choice. It's, it's just not buildable. You can't build there. Um, so maybe this project doesn't have to be 180 units. I don't think we should squeeze everything into it. I don't think we should shift this property uh, as it was approved at town meeting by only one vote after three votes. Uh, I think that you knew what you were getting when you bought it. You're, you planned out your best, but you don't have to get 180 units. It's Frank, like making Frank, sausage. I'm gonna stop you there because you're, you're bringing up a topic that it, it passed by vote. No matter how many votes yeah, it passed by. It's not a by, mandate though, it's not a huge mandate. But, it, but the, point, the point of the, the matter is, is that it, it passed by, it, by <coughs> A, a, a majority vote and it and it and it went so you need to stop saying that it only passed by one vote because I think you're, you're making a bed that doesn't you said it more than I did so I know so can I, I think can the I, point's been made yeah, and can I, I make a point to the woman's yeah. comment yes. so 
the this is the Osma, Osma district, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, Elaine, but the the buffer is 25 feet. So is the, that correct? The setback. The setback. Set, yeah, the sorry. minimum setback. Setback. So this project meets that need. Um, so it's not like they're asking us for a waiver that we can negotiate with them in that respect. So I just wanted to make that point. Well, they are asking for. A a shift in in the agreement. A shift, but they're following within the within. Right. But they're not. We're not specifically lifting a waiver for that, are we, Elaine? There's no waiver for that. No. Check back. Thank you. Thank you. It is. It is a supermajority that's needed for it, though. On this board, it's not just a majority. No. My, my point was, there's no waiver for us to negotiate with. And 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 that being said, that that they, they are in compliance with the setback anyway. It's not about the setback. Right. But, but I think, if I may, yes, please, please. The chair, while yes, it's the green area allows them some additional area for development, I think that what they've done is they've kind of made recommendations to put in place additional shielding through trees and, and whatnot. Because in theory, if they went the old way, they didn't have they wouldn't have to put anything at all. So I think that they're trying to kind of take that extra step, Frank to do some things to mitigate the visual impact to some of the surrounding neighbors and the people on Wilson Street. Muriel. Um, speaking only for myself, I would just say that I think the board is making a special effort to focus on that area as well to mitigate for this slight shift forward. And I know that when you're on the other side and you're an existing neighbor, the shift doesn't feel insignificant or slight, and I appreciate that. Um, I know for myself, that's why I'm trying to focus attention on um, screening that is attractive and, and uh, shields the neighbors as much as possible. Um, it's, it, it is a shift. It, in my mind, it's not a huge shift. Um, and I know that it, it's different for people who live there than it is for people looking at a, at a plan. Might I also add that <coughs> reducing the squeezing the buildable area doesn't necessarily mean a reduction in the number of units. It could be compressed and become more dense. So that's an alternative that may be an unintended consequence. And then we're gonna I, I just need some clarification. I, I, I thought that it was under the zoning was uh, commercial sub-district uh, type C. And I thought the setback, rear setback requirements for that was 50 feet from the property line. It's 50 feet from the street, the street, from the street line, from the street line. The the street line. So from Wilson Street, street right. it's 50 but feet. It was just mentioned that it's a 25 foot setback. So either it's 25 feet or it's 50 it's feet. It's 25 to the side lot line, but it's 50 feet to a street. 50 feet from the rear of the structure to the road to Wilson Street. If the, if the property line abuts the street, then there's a 50 foot setback. Okay. Okay. There's people. There's people, yes. Come on up. I just, um, I, I handed at the beginning of the meeting everybody this that has a whole lot of um, information from the bylaws and from the town's open space and recreation plan. The town's master plan and the host community agreement that are all speaking to um, the natural resources of land, the, um, the visual feel of the land, and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just um, like, I'm, I'm sorry if I got the impression from the um, voting guidelines that the board already felt that they were. Um, going to approve this, um, but um, it felt like these, these, um, these statements by the town and the Osmond zoning bylaws dis are disregarded in that process, if that's the case. Um, and I'm just wondering, what's the purpose of all this? Is it just nice words about the visual, you know, open feel of the town? And um, <coughs> it's, there's a lot here. You can look at it. Um, and there's a lot more than that as well. So I just, I'm just curious, like, why this is all here if it's not part of the consideration. If, you know, we, we do have some of these, these kind of considerations in the bylaw, and I don't understand, you know, if they're part of the process or not. If somebody who knows about it could speak to that, would be great. 
Go ahead, and Lincoln. So Go ahead. I have um, a unique perspective on this, Julia. I was uh, part of the Land Use Study Committee back when this Osmond was being um, was being written, and these words were hard fought and and powerfully meant. Um, and I think that um, it it can be hard to. It can be hard to see uh, the intent when, when there's so much construction that's going on and there's so much that's different. But the part and parcel of the Osmond was intended to protect these things. And certain areas were set aside for specific kinds of construction. So in my mind, um, it, we, are, we are swinging in the spirit of the Osmond, even though it is hard for individual neighbors, for individual construction projects to see their piece um, constructed. Mm -hmm. And it would be hard for me to. Um, but I do think that this is a, this is a global zoning area and, and the, um, the sight lines are meaningful for, just to pick one, and features are meaningful for each piece. But they were, they were most meaningfully um, addressed as part of the entirety and, and where construction would happen, and that was decided um, 10 years ago, and in trying to protect some very unique and valuable features of that property. It's one of the reasons why the north side is not as developed as the south side, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like the um, public side of it is being slightly neglected, which is the scenic road and the view from the state park. So the scenic road, uh, we are committed to talking about and addressing. Um, and I, I share your concerns that that happened. And I, I don't live on the side of town. I, I, I never go up Wilson Street anymore. Mm -hmm. Now that my kids don't play soccer anymore. <laughs> um, but we are committed to addressing that, and it's meaningful to me. Yeah. Um, and. Mm -hmm. Wilson Street continues around, and it's a scenic road where we are now having an emergency access, and this board did address it, um, and we keep it an emergency access, and I know that's, that, that represents a compromise, a deep compromise. Um, and then we talked tonight, we want additional screening, and that isn't something that necessarily was part of the original plan, but that's, that's in keeping it speaking to the additional issues and trying to mitigate for some of, of what's going on. I just wanted to say that, that from my perspective, for somebody who's paid attention for a long time, I'm not arguing with you, but I think that um, boards and committees in this planning board um, are making a really concerted effort to um, to comply with the spirit and the letter of the bylaws and, and of the town, including the Osmond. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Muriel, for that well-spoken well -spoken articulation. Hello. Hey. John Phillips, Beat Google Road. Um, really, one quick point I'd like to bring up here. Uh, again, thanking them for the emergency access road going in. Unfortunately, I've never been able to really see it on a plane yet. I know it takes time to make those things. And, and having said that, the trail network that's going to go through to that road where they're going to be parking for the uh, emergency access road there, um, I'd like to see that trail go as far back away from the road, that trail network across from Kruger Road, which is, they're not gonna touch any of the stones. And to see that trail, if it can be back 100 feet to cut through the woods to go to that parking area, um, so it would have less impact on the, the scenic roadway and to protect the current view coming up from Kruger Road. So I don't know if we need to add that for a condition or whatever they can do in their power to keep that as far in as possible. Thank you. Does that, does that impose any? How far is it now? Yeah, can we see what that? What we're talking about is this trail right here. And the reason it is shaped the way it is is because we want it to be accessible. Can't exceed a 5% grade, so we need some length so that we can get that elevation, we can get to the top of the, the hill where the amenities are. So we don't have the ability to move that trail. Do you we understand that, sir? You want to come back up to the mic for a second? I'll, uh, if I can make some clarity out of that. Well, uh, they talk about elevation and ability to move the trail. Yet they said they couldn't move the access road that we moved. Well, they never. I don't, think they, I don't think. 
I don't think it was but ever. Again, I, I mean, I lived there, and uh, all I'm saying is that, to me, the elevation is pretty straightforward. It's, it's almost flat. It goes up a little bit. I don't see why they couldn't maximize, even even off 20 feet, just to keep it further away from that scenic view that we see coming out of Cruz Road. Right. Again, no, thank, no you, you, thank you for that. Thank you for your input on that. Um, so back to you guys, if if I may. Um, is there something that you can do with that uh, going forward, or do you think that you're, you're, you're steadfast in... The trail alignment needs to stay, stay more or less where it is now. I mean, give or take a couple of feet. It, it, it needs to be there so it can be flatter, it can be 5% or flatter. Yep. Okay. I guess... Uh, go ahead. Um, Rob Towner, 9 Kruger Road. The only thing I'd like to see on that trail is uh, that possibly you could leave the trees up and let the people walk through the woods. You know, instead of, it look, you're going to clear cut it so that that's what we see. And they're walking, why can't they walk through the woods? I mean, you can make trails through woods anywhere else. Thank you. Fair request. How's that, how's that load? The grades do not allow for a 5% grade, so we have to do some earthwork and manipulation of the grades to accommodate the trail at 5%. Can you then replace it with trees after the work is done? I mean, I think what he's asking for is some trees along that trailway, right, sir? Excuse me? You're, you're, asking, for, you're asking for some trees along the trailway. No, I'm asking to leave, leave the leave woods the that are there right. and but, put the trail through it. So, so to that point, I, I don't know if everybody's loud enough, but, but what he just said was that, that they, in order to keep the 5%, they have to do uh, earthwork on that? Right. So, so to bring to, to to not disturb it is is problematic, and then to not bring it to bring it overgrade is problematic. I, I understand what he's saying. Leave as many trees up as you can. As we can. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you sir. That's Thank exactly you very much. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you for that. All right. I like to put out as an example on the north section on the section that's mostly built. There are strands of trees that are protected and staying, and, and they're do, doing a really good job of keeping things like that. Thank you, Frank. Okay, so now final beta issues. Do we have any? <laughs> that seems pretty easy. That's too <laughs> easy, Phil. <laughs> For the folks at home, there was a. <laughs> <laughs> Could you come up and just tell us that, Phil? <laughs> um, as far as we're concerned, all the engineering issues have been addressed. Thank or, you very much. Or recommended. Thank you for that, Phil. Uh, discussion on approval criteria, plan modification. I thought we were still discussing MPS. We went to final beta issues, but yeah, we went to final beta. Yeah, but we never finished discussing MPS. I asked the board, didn't I? Okay. Go ahead. Can we talk about it? Did I, I miss that? Oh uh, sure. Uh, to <coughs> maybe explain to the home audience, um, the MPSP has a master plan special permit yes thank you i'm guilty of that too many alphabets um alphabet soup it has a stipulation the applicant shall make no significant change in the billable area depicted on the master plan without prior approval of an amendment to this mpsp authorizing such a change which is what our board can do um and we're being asked to do this so that the land can shift um the can you put that back the map with the <laughs> exercise to make? You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> and then you step. Now the the gray area without any changes is the area that they could currently build on without any change amended to the uh, agreement. I have a question through the project lead to Elaine. Uh, earlier tonight you said that uh, they could still build 180 units on the gray area because the zoning allows them to to build to right. that density so and density is an issue and um, even as it is uh, even if it was the original area I had an issue historically I have an issue with the density of this project um, one of the neighbors sent a letter to the planning board uh, pointing out that Mr. McDowell was paid by Eversource for the reduction in buildable land 
And um, so part of that's been addressed in the, in the real world. It's shaken out a little bit. So I'm a little bit curious as why we're, you're asking to make a change that we're not seeing the benefit from. Mr. Chair, come on. Actually, that is not true. Uh, Evasource made a payment to us to overlap on the existing restricted land that the town already had. It has nothing to do with this. It's actually point to the portions of it, are, most of it, frankly, is parallel to the fence. Matter of fact, if you drive in Legacy Farms Road North, headed into the project from Wilson, it's mostly on the right. There's a little bit on the left, and the reason they did that, and you say, well, gee, why would they pay money to have a piggyback restriction on something that's already restricted? They needed it for federal guidelines. Thank my, you. My, my question is that part of the light yellow, light green area was compensated to you by Eversource. No, actually, it's it's the majority of the rest of the property. It's a sun. It's a tiny little piece. How, but how much? I don't know. It, it's small. It's none of that buildable area. It's it, it may be maybe this corner. Thank you. Okay. I just want to speak. Yeah, I'm quickly. sorry, Mary. No, I'll, no, I'll it's okay. Um, I, I know density is often a dirty word, but it was an intentionally built-in feature in this zoning, um, and it is it is meant to um, be part of what supports the revenue positive piece of it, um, and it's meant to be. It was it was it designed and meant to be a different kind of zoning, and we can look back and like it or or not, um, but density in this case in this zoning district is not intended to be thrown around as a, as a dirty word it's really what was specifically intentionally designed so that uh, development was clustered and a great deal of open space was preserved so i just want to make the point that thank this is that what we were expecting thank you and to tag on that reiterate there are three additional acres of open space in this configuration, and how much is of the green, dark green land is there in, in acres? I, I don't know. I didn't watch by that. This is new buildable area, four point five. So we're, we're giving four point five, and we're, but we're moving seven point two. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that's all. All right. So. Discussion for uh, the approval of the criteria where through. Uh, discussion on conditions of approval. How many conditions do we have? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, currently printed in 27, yes. So I, be I believe there are 27 is, 20, 27 is what I believe are the, are the approval conditions. I think we added a couple tonight. Did we? Do we, I made some notes. We can go through those when, when you're ready. Okay. All right. So, um, do you want me to go through these? Uh, yes. Okay. There are copies here for the for the people in attendance. Table, on the table all out the there. Okay. So, um, number one, the submitted documents satisfy all applicants' requirements for the zoning bylaw and the and the host community agreement. Number two. Each existing intersection and roadway providing access to the site will continue to operate at an, in, at an acceptable level of service based on the uh, anticipated impact of vehicle uh, traffic from previously approved use within the site that will remain, plus this development project. I don't have what you're reading. Yeah, there, they were all on the table. table right over there. Yeah. You can have mine. 
It's it's the Trails at Legacy Farms voting guide and draft conditions. April 26th? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. April 26th. What page are you on? Page one. So my numbers, Starting aren't, the my numbers aren't jiving with yours because are you showing six? Are we going to do the, we did the change, one. change to the buildable area has six, right? Yeah, we did. So we talked about those a little bit. He's on the special permit criteria. Right. Because I thought he was just reading. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, site plan approval, the trails of legacy, legacy farms, majority right. vote required. Right. He's going to find it. Yeah. Yes. With the, my findings. Okay. We good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving, moving forward through that, uh, the following five decision criteria have been met with the conditions that will be imposed by the board. The site plan complies with the master plan special permit. That was A. B, the site plan meets all the requirements and standards set forth in this article, i.e., the OSMUD um, bylaw. Um, the master plan special permit and applicable um, design guidelines. C, the convenience and safety of, ve of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the development project and in, re in relation to adjacent areas, the public ways is insured. Um, D, substantial adverse potential impacts of the development project have been adequately, uh, adequately mitigated. And E, um, adequate mitigation has been provided with respects to any conditions impacting on safety, uh, on on-site safety um, whether such conditions are created on site or off site. So that would be um, um, the first step. The step two would be to vote on the motion um, to make the findings. Do we make? No discussion? We can discuss them. Okay. So discussion. Yeah, number five adequate mitigation has been provided with respect to any conditions impacting on-site safety, whether such conditions are created on-site or off-site. That would be E, everyone, not five, but three E. Yes. No. No. Yes. It is three yes. E on our page. Page 16. You're on a difference. I'm sorry, I was. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so three E, same wording. Uh, I haven't, you know, I do have an issue with that. I don't think I can adequately feel comfortable approving all the 38 homes that are on the left side of that diagram nearest the uh, light yellow section. I don't believe that um, we've present, been presented any science uh, or metrics concerning the facts of those homes being on the uh, border of the blast circle. So I, I just want to address that, that um, safety officials in, have addressed this and have increased the safety boundaries. That's why we're discussing a shift. Um, and I am, again, loath to do somebody else's job at this point. Which board. safety officials? Um, I would believe that Chief had, had a lot to do with Mr. McDowell. This, this discussion has been exhaustively reviewed by the planning board for over a year. Between the planning board and ourselves, we spent over a quarter of a million dollars on some of the finest consultants in the country and have come to the conclusions that this, in fact, is the safe zone. Thank you. That being said, I haven't been on the planning board with some couple of others here. I'm going to ask you to not do back and forth. I mean, if you have a new point. I can ask the same. Um, my yeah. point is that I don't feel safe as a member of this board proving anything to do with safety, which is one of the metrics that we're being asked to review for those homes, the 38 homes along the, the border of that circle. Okay, good. Uh, we uh, haven't we'll seen anything that proves the efficiency Frank, of the lanterns. Frank, I'm going to stop you there, and the reason why I'm going to stop have you, you there, you have, the reason why I'm going to stop you, have, you there, Frank. You have proof of that lanterns 
being effective in any situation. It has been mitigated already. In I've in been on the board. It has not been okay, mitigated let's, to let's my... Let's not get into an argument, but, you don't, but your point... You're not wait, the professional. Stop, 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 stop. The point has been made and recognized and is being considered by the rest of the board. Thank you. So... But if there's evidence that you'd like to present that shows the safety of these features that we're being asked to approve, then I'd like to see it. Okay. So your point has been made. So moving from that, yes. Um, just just a one point. The I've read <clears throat> three of the reports that were written of the safety reports, but I have not been able to find the one that that you commissioned. So I was wondering if you would make that available. It's public record. I just haven't been able to find it. I am. Is it on your your <clears throat> website? I don't know. We'll get you the information and have it for you at the. Uh, I, I understood. It's a report, right? Right, and we'll get it as soon as somebody can research it. We'll get it to you. Okay. So all that being said, um, do I hear a motion? Before you yep. before you do that. So before you vote on the site plan, um, you should go back to the first page and vote on the special permit amendment first. Thank because you. if you don't approve the change in buildable area, then you can't approve the site plan. Thank you for that. Thank you. And that is what Fran has read. Yeah. So Fran has already read. Right. So, so do I get a motion to make I will make a motion to approve the amendment amendment to the master plan special permit as requested. As referenced uh, the new buildable area plan. Do I get a second? I will second that. All, all those in favor? Is there a discussion? Oh, is there a discussion? I apologize. That's okay. All those in favor? Discussion. He said discussion. Oh, you but then you looked over there, so I thought we were going to go. Well, because uh, oh, I thought you were uh, telling me the okay. point of okay. order was. Well, usually we go in order in this okay. kind of stuff. Anyone else? Um, I'm against approving this. Uh, I think that uh, they have less land, they can build smaller units, and it makes less of an impact. Um, the original idea was to have this be commercial space. Uh, it came to town meeting to change it. It failed, it came back the next year, it passed by one vote. It did pass, they can build 100 units. As Elaine has pointed out, uh, even on just the gray area, they can build 180 units. Uh, it'll be denser. Um, and I think that uh, for the additional three acres, I'm not that impressed. Um, I think that it's too dense as it is, and I think it's too close to anything else. So I'm voting uh, no, and I ask my board members to also vote no. Okay, so to that point, I would like to say to, re to, to Frank's point is that they meet the requirements of setback and it has been vetted. Um, that being said, I'm going to go around the table. No? What do I, what, what do, I do? No, you can go around the table. Just, take, just, take, oh. yeah. just take the vote. Okay, so we're going to take the vote. Um, David, how do you vote? You, you can just say vote. ask for all in favor. All, 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 favor. all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those in fa uh, uh, opposed, say aye. Nay. Nay. Um, anybody abstaining? Anybody abstaining? With that, um, the, the vote passes. The, on the second one. The findings. What is it? The findings. The findings. Yes, thank you. Um, do I get an, a motion? I motion that we approve all the units in the plan except for the ones along the left side of the map. The 38 units on the left side. We have a second? No second. Do I have a motion for the what's on the table? Did, did uh, we as go written? through all the, the conditions? I'm sorry. On this, on, on this one. Just, just voting on the findings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Findings. I'm sorry. Thank you. So I make a motion uh, to approve the findings as, as written. I'll Do I get, I, I get a second. All those in favor? I mean, right. discussion, I apologize. Doesn't this vote include all the conditions? No, if it doesn't, step, no, step three. Step three to approve the plan. Thank you very much. 
You need my highlighter next time. Any discussion? You know my opinion. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. All those abstaining? Motion carries. Now I will go on to read the discussion of criterion one um, compliance with MPSP. Um, number one, the MPSP would. Um, Do we need to, sorry. Do yeah. we need to uh, vote to approve the site plan? Conditions, or is that what we're going through now? Yeah, That's what we're going through. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, number one, there are three three aspects to this. Uh, number one would be. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Everybody okay? We're just saying if, if everyone in the room has them, you can paraphrase. Okay, yeah, so, so all right, so uh, the, the first one is um, uh, requires that each applicant for the site plan review um, for the development of the, of the project shall indicate whether or not the develop, development project is to be located in a village that will be um, subject to the Village Landowners Association of the, uh, the LA. Um, yeah, the development project will contain individual villages and will um, be subject to VLA documents. Um, the applicant request, um, requested to postpone the submittal, um, the submission of the VLA documents. Um, the applicant shall submit the draft of VLA um, document, uh, documents to the town for review and approval by town council upon the issuance of the first building permit for the uh, residential dwelling. Cliff. Yes. Can I make a suggestion that Elaine summarize them because she's more familiar yeah, with Yeah, you, you want to summarize them, the next two? Uh, or anyone, anyone here, Cliff. Yeah. I was just thinking you were more familiar with them. Okay. Thank you. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, sure. I was, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, so that, no, there's some long ones coming up. Yeah. So that first one is the timing of those documents for review and approval by town council. The second one is that the restricted land um, restoration and landscaping work has to be completed before the issuance of the last certificate of occupancy. Uh, number three is that the restricted land that will be created will be subject to one of the covenants that the MPSP has attached to it and is um, prescribed by town council in the form. Uh, number four is that uh, in accordance with the design guidelines, um, they have to comply with those requirements, and that includes the five suggestions of the design review board, which are at the top of page three. Uh, basically, colors of shingles, um, house color, uh, front elevations, the clubhouse designs and elevations <coughs> coming back for additional review, which I think is, is planned at this point, and the maximum height of light poles. Uh, number five is that um, the applicant um, shall utilize the types of homes that they submitted with the application, so they can't deviate with that unless they come back to the board, and we will attach those to the decision. Uh, number six is that uh, there be 18 affordable housing units created as required in the zoning, and this condition discusses the um, the. Um, the timing of when those are created, which uh, the board included in a previous decision. Uh, number seven uh, re is regarding the design guidelines um, accommodating um, network of trails and asks that the Open Space Preservation Commission be the board's representative in that process in reviewing with the trail locations and siting. Uh, number eight is that uh, no building permit will be issued for a residential dwelling unit until the private way that provides access to it has been graded and graveled and is sufficient for life safety equipment to access the site in the opinion of the fire chief. And no certificate of occupancy will be issued until that way has been paved with the binder course of pavement and it extends to Legacy Farms North so that emergency vehicles can access that. All sidewalks within it shall comply with ADA requirements. Uh, landscaping within the site distance triangle shown on the plan shall be maintained to maintain clear site distance and that the association documents shall include this requirement. Number 11 is that all exterior lighting, um, whether shown on the plan or required by code, has to be shielded, directed downward and not upward and outward and can't spill off the property. All of the um, dwelling units within this project will have automatic fire suppression systems 
is number 12. Number 13 is that all mechanical equipment that's fixed uh, shall be screened from view from the ground. That includes uh, air conditioner condensers and those kinds of things outside of units. In accordance with the zoning bylaw, the applicant shall provide a performance guarantee in the amount of um, $50,000 as suggested here uh, prior to commencement of construction. Um, which will cover any unforeseen problems with respect to erosion, damage to trees, pavement, and so forth. So the board may want to discuss that amount before you vote. Uh, number 15 is if the construction hasn't begun within three years of the decision being filed with the town clerk, it will be automatically rescinded unless the board grants an extension. Number 16 is that it shall be completed no later than eight years following the beginning of work. Um, the board could grant an extension if requested. Number 17 is uh, <coughs> the submission of a construction management plan uh, is required to the planning board prior to commencement of any work. Number 18 is erosion and sedimentation control measures shall be implemented during construction in accordance with the site plan and the construction management plan. And if they're found inadequate, the applicants shall immediately correct any deficiencies. Number 19 um, has been discussed earlier, and that's where the di Director of Municipal Inspections can um, seek additional assistance uh, if they need it, and they can require the uh, hiring of a registered professional engineer to review the stormwater management system installation. Number 20 is the applicant shall mitigate all construction-related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and dust control in accordance with the provisions of the special permit and the construction management plan. Number 21, the applicant shall regularly remove construction trash and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practice and the management plan. Um, and no tree stumps, demolition materials, and so forth shall be buried on the site or burned. The planning board um, shall receive a sign-off confirming that the site contractor and any major subcontractors have received the construction management plan before they begin work. The number 23 is uh, mirrors the construction hours that are in the town bylaw, chapter 141 of the general bylaws. So it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturday is from 8 to 4, um, and that includes no uh, Sundays and no holidays. If a construction arises um, a conflict. of conflict between the Conservation Commission order of conditions and this decision, the stricter will prevail. That's number 24. Number 25, the access drive to Wilson Street shall be gated slash chained at both ends, um, and the applicants shall work with the fire department on the specific type of gate or chain that is used. Number 26, no construction vehicles shall travel on the following sections of Wilson Street. Between the Wilson Street and Legacy Farms North intersection extending to the north, and between the Legis Wilson Street Legacy Farms North intersection extending to the south. Construction vehicles may travel through the intersection on Legacy Farms North when using it to travel to and from Cedar Street and Route 85. Number 27, a traffic signal warrant analysis shall be conducted in six months uh, as recommended by Beta Group um, to determine whether, um, uh, exactly, not six months, in October of 2018, uh, which the board will review and at that time and PP reviewed. Um, during the discussion, I noted a few other items that the board might want to include. Um, and from the previous meeting, um, it was noted that the, the uh, sign that's showed on sheet 41 is not in accordance with, so we would have a condition that says that that particular sign is not approved, regardless of the fact that it's shown on the plan still. So that would be number 28. Right. Yeah, that yeah. would be 28, gentlemen, right? You, you understood that? I'm getting confused. Looks, that's the one that Roy suggested changing the name of the road to the trail. Right. So right now it says the development name. So right. So we right. would, would use the street name as opposed. Right. So okay. Which has to be approved by the second. Which has right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had a couple of notes here regarding the timing of the tree planting at Wilson Street. I uh, wasn't sure how the board wanted to handle that. If you wanted at the beginning of the project, uh, middle, end. The five trees. This is off the site, and it. Yeah, I think they said it would be part of phase one. Yeah, I would say okay. the beginning. Yeah. So in phase one. Yes, okay. in, in phase one. That is amendable, right, gentlemen? And then, thirty would be the addition of the trees and other vegetation behind the units um, that are following the curve around to the back, um, and that would. Um, 
be a combination of evergreens and deciduous trees for a permanent year-round screen. Does that sound? Yes, I think that sounds right. Add it in. Is that okay with you? Yeah. yeah. Fine. And more? Uh, number 31 would be the shielding of the stockpile and rock crushing operation. Uh, actually, not shielding, but the setback of 100 feet from the roads and property lines. Yes, correct. Okay. Add that in, please. Right. And also that it wouldn't restrict any drainage and stockpile materials will not restrict drainage. Okay. And a lot of the drainage on that stuff is <laughs> in here. Right. So. And then um, 32 would be the developer will use reasonable efforts to screen the site from view of um, state, park. Sure. State, state park. State park by use of um, a mix of evergreen and deciduous trees as, as needed. Uh, are, we, are we clear on that? That it's it's to the, the discretion of. The developer yeah, to just go trees. Just, trees, just, trees, just yeah. trees. So, so yes. Just trees. Yeah. yeah. I think they're fine with that. Yes, that, that'll be fine. Yeah, that'll be fine. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, discussion? Uh, when I don't know if that's done. That was all yeah. I had on my list. Okay. Oh, but number fourteen. Did we want to discuss? Is that what you were going to say? Well, well, first uh, I wanted to bring up the VLA, the Village Landowners Association. Yep. Um, they're asking for a waiver in a Lincoln use plan. Sorry, what number? Uh, number five, one. four. Uh, number one. <laughs> uh, usually that we would have it with the site plan, but uh, it, is there a risk if we don't have it now? Or I think the board has consistently granted this later submission. Okay. So uh, it, it's tied with the condition that they couldn't get the first permit until they do that. Um, so that's just some more expl explanation. Um, I do have a question though for the uh, deed being reviewed uh, by the state, uh, it's, 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 which explains the over 55 limitations. What if the state turns that down? Do we have a protection? Should we make a condition that if the state rejects that, then we come back and talk about this? Or? The state only reviews the deed restrictions on the affordable units, and that's a deed for affordability going forward. Mm -hmm. So there would be a, an age-restricted component to the deed, um, but their only concern is the affordability of being preserved in perpetuity. But what protects us if they say no, if the state says no? Then it would just have to be modified. They have to keep modifying, the, well, basically the, steep, the state provides you the deed writer to use. You don't mm -hmm. write your own. Right, right. So, so they come back, we talk, it's it's all. We will we'll submit a local action right. unit application uh, and we'll include their proposed deed writer. We'll work with the, the applicants on that. Thank you. Thank you, um, so I had a couple points for discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, one is anything around the cleaning of the, the storm drains, right? There's a number of storm drains. I think, am I correct in there, right? Who's going to clean those mm -hmm. out on a consistent basis? Is that going to be the association's responsibility? Okay, I'd like to have something in there that specifically calls that out. It's in the operation and maintenance plan. It's part of the drainage calculation. So if the board feels more comfortable with the condition as well. I do because the just stuff gets lost. The, the stuff gets lost and nobody mm -hmm. does it. It just happens. Could yeah. you add that too? And then the second one. Well, is wait a minute. What was what was it to be added? So something along the lines is you can wordsmith it that there's um, regular cleaning and maintenance of the storm drains. Along about the catch catch basin. That catch basins along Wilson Street. As yeah, a responsibility of the. Well, he was they, he was they were thinking on their site. Yeah. On, on the project on side. On the project yeah, side. Yeah, what yeah. did I say? You said on the Wilson side. Uh, on the project side. We know what you're yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we didn't, but we want clarity anyway. <laughs> if I could just suggest it to include in accordance with the operation and maintenance plan that was provided. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Amended, right? It's probably in the order conditions. Say that again, yeah. Phil. It's probably already in the order conditions. Yeah, maybe. From the Conservation Commission? Mm -hmm. so, but either way, John Westerling's going to thank you. <laughs> right, right, right. Suspenders and, and, and belts. And then the, the second one, and maybe this is already covered under number 23 with the construction hours. But Mr. Small brought up a good point, I thought, in terms of the noise. Um, I'm not sure how that's managed, but if that could be something that's you know, 
taken into consideration by the developer. Um, so yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I mean, that. we're going to use a lot of judgment here when, if there is any rock crushing, which I doubt there's going to be any, but I suppose there could be some. It won't be 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Hmm. Um, it probably wouldn't be on the weekend, period. Um, so, no, for what little noise I think the site construction would generate, we will certainly use discretion on the time of day. Um, that I appreciate done. that. I'm yep. sure we can and Thank you for that. I just wanted to note, too, as far as the town is concerned, going there and starting up equipment counts, and so that right. can't start before 7. Yep. Great. Thank all right. So all of those provisions were added. I have a gentleman <coughs> standing up at the mic. Um, yeah, I don't know if this should be added or not, but I know we were, you know, for the stone wall that's out in front of Kruger Road, uh, we had a verbal that that 80-foot wall wouldn't be touched. Did we add that down there, or is it appropriate? Yeah, part of the scenic road, right? Part, yeah. part of the scenic road. The yeah, they haven't applied to remove anything, so they can't. Yeah. Uh -huh. they? they can't remove. They can't move it. They haven't applied for a permit to do that. So you're covered. So you're covered. You're covered. You're covered. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you, Chief. Uh, uh, Chief. I know. It's <coughs> really bad yeah. For uh, number eight, I have um, spoken with the developers in our initial meetings. Generally, um, what I've done with the rest of the project, and uh, I worked out with Pulte, is binder code for the building permit. So if we could just kind of amend that to sh have binder code at the when the uh, building permit's done, they can pour the concrete, but as soon as the building materials get on site, I want binder coat down so that I don't have to deal with weather conditions getting stuck, all that. Uh, Chief, uh, Chief, that's fine, but if you're going to have that language, if you could say it's okay to get a foundation permit, you just can't go vertical until the binder's out. And that's just the um, what we've used with the building inspector's <coughs> definition, so however somebody manages that, that's fine. So I, I like the language on both both aspects with Mr. McDowell and Chief. So if that can be noted, please. Yes, please. Thank you, Chief. Katie Towner, Nine Kruger Road. So um, the 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 condition on um, dealing with the drainage was taken out in this go around. So um, uh, my request is that you put a um, some kind of a a time limit on the uh, mitigation that that is going to be supposedly coming that if um, some time limit that that has to happen before um, uh, I'm asking for a contingency to be a contingency condition to be put in if the other process doesn't resolve the, the drainage issue then it, it comes back within a reasonable amount of time, not eight years. <laughs> you know, this project is going to take a long time. So can I, can I this, this drainage issue has been going on for three years. So I think so this should be, it should be bounded We're somehow. talking about Wilson Street and the drainage on Wilson Street. And my, my concern is and that you keep talking about the intersection. And the part I'm concerned about is not the intersection. What's the so part that you are concerned about, to be clear for the record? It, uh, the picture we showed you the picture last week it where the was scenic in the road is disturbed. No, no, no. it's <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I'm really trying to follow. It's the spillway. The you have that drainage structure that um, fills and it's All right. be but it's on the it's on the it's road off -site. that we're it's off site that we're talking about next next meeting. Yeah, right, maybe, maybe and you're so, and and everyone's hopeful that you're going to come up with some kind of a solution, but. Yeah. If this solution does not materialize, or if it's phased out in a number of years, I would just like you to bound. So, so I have to, I have to stop you there. Yes. That isn't a condition of their project. It just isn't. We are, we are committed to solving that problem, um, and and it's on us to follow through. But that isn't a condition of their project. Right. The, what I'm saying is that that, if if nothing happens with that other process that that we put a condition in there that 
that they have to do something about the water coming off of their property. They are going to have to do deal with their own water. That's part of part but and parcel. But what he it. what he showed us in the plan is that according to them, it's a meadow, so there is no water coming All off right. it. Uh, let me, we understand. Let me, we understand. Okay, for, for time constraints in, in, involved. But it's just Donnie, a contingency. I'm just asking for a contingency. Okay, if, me, if it doesn't. It, what we are going to do is hold them to all that we can legally hold them to do. What you are talking about, if we had infinite authority, we could do it, but legally we're restricted in doing that. Because as long as they adhere to everything in the regulations which they're doing, that's all we are empowered to force them to do so I, I believe if you looked at the town bylaw any water that's coming but from they are they are addressing what they need to do legally I understand what you're looking for and we can discuss that more fully on the 14th but trust me when I'm telling you and Elena am I wrong that it can't be part of this it can't, it can't be, be part conditioned of this. in this and I know that that's that's frustrating hard to understand but we'll get into more of a discussion everything that we can legally hold them to related to this development site which is just that area there we are holding them to and legacy farms itself is a the big the overall development so the master plan special permit the zoning still applies to those off-site impacts but it's at a different location so the board would discuss it in the overall legacy farms right. context so there's still some Teeth. Because you have two different people involved, it's um, like you and your neighbor is the way to look at it. And if you bought your house from your neighbor, as an example, and there was you're building your house, and then somebody came back and said, Well, it was the neighbor's property, you have to take care of this on your neighbor's property. Well, they're buying it from legacy so they're only responsible and we're holding them to everything we can hold them to legally related to their property so i understand where you're coming from well, the I'm water is coming from somewhere right but we're, we're, we're addressing we're doing it. it's so not addressing. coming from the sky right, right. <laughs> but we're well it is coming it. from the sky but <laughs> and this is something <laughs> <Land. Yeah. laughs> we appreciate it and trust days. us when we're telling you if we could do what we would but we're doing everything we can legally do and be as vocal in two weeks and bring it up in two weeks and I'm sure Mr. McDowell will be addressing it and that's where we have to get his commitment because he's responsible for the rest of the area. But they're responsible for the water. Right, and they are address. And they quantified that in okay. cubic feet. Correct. Per and that, second. That's been, so. that's been addressed and they've done everything legally they can do and we can force them to do it. But why why couldn't you get them to, to All right, we, 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 we just we, can't we, legally do it. We have to move on from this topic. Thank I you. I appreciate it, but we Thank just you. can't legally do it. So with that being said I motion we accept the conditions as written. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Number 14, we were going to discuss. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I got ahead of my house. Uh, Elaine is 50,000. Do you think consistent with the size of the development? I think so. The, the other project on the north side was much larger. And that was 100,000. 100,000. Okay. Any discussion on that? Amy? Well, would this help guarantee if problems arise with the water going where it's not supposed to go? 50,000? If that's what I'm reading correctly. Yeah, 50,000 with, with the whole of north was a hundred thousand okay just we're all very yeah. nervous about because the, the previous issues they, they want to make sure we're it's an adequate amount yeah i, I mean i i feel personally that fifty thousand dollars is is sufficient if we took the the initial for the whole north village and at a hundred thousand well for eight years maybe amy has a point take, take the north out of it i, I don't know right it doesn't necessarily have to be would you, you have a problem like, let you me just say, you, would you have a problem with a hundred thousand Instead of fifty thousand, I like the fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> if we can move this along, we can, if we can move this along now. That seems fair. At a hundred thousand, can we? What about seventy-five thousand? <laughs> so I'm going to defer to Elaine. I'm happy with fifty. Yeah. I'm happy with fifty. I'm actually happy with fifty. Uh, I'm going to ask again. What about seventy-five thousand? I second seventy-five. If I could, 
the truth be told, it's, it's almost meaningless having this problem. Because right. yeah. reality is, you're controlling building permits. You're controlling right. certificates of occupancy. Right. Right. You've got more control on those two issues than any bond will ever give right. you. Right. Thank you, Roy. So, again, does the board okay, is the board okay with $50,000? Let's, let's take a vote on that. All those just, in favor. Just stop all. Just, if you're okay yeah. with 50, hold your hand up. Only four of us. Okay. Is the board okay with 75? <laughs> I can, I can, I can be flexible. Gentlemen, I implore you. Are you okay with 75? Thank you. Thank you. And that's why I implored you anyway. So, so look. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Okay. So, with that being said, we have a motion. Yes. We have a second. 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 All those in favor? I mean, discussion. <laughs> Any, further discussion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Just have two more. Oh, one more. One more. Close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Um, second. Just a second. second. Thank you. Thank you. I have a second. Um, okay. Uh, any opposed? Oh, no, we have no discussion. No. Discussion. No. All, in favor. all in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed abstain. So carry. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for your patience and your working with us. I appreciate that very much. Please come back in two weeks. <laughs> Thank you all very much. 30 days, yeah. Thank you. And don't forget to come back Thank on you. the 14th. Yeah. For what? For what? <laughs> <laughs> oh! 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 Thanks, thanks everybody. The only other item on the agenda was to discuss the update. For the 14th, we have a long list of things people have brought up in the course of this hearing, right? That we're, and the photos and everything. We're, we're prepared for this. Would that, yeah, that would comments be. Everyone's comments are taken into account. They don't need to resend their comments, right? Or, like, members of the public should know if they see it. Yeah, it's, first of all, it's not, it's not, a, it's not an official hearing, right? It's not official hearing. Okay. Right. right. So, yes, we will take into account everything people have already sent. Mm -hmm. okay. I assume. So, we have all the photos and things back in the packet. Yeah, if they can be submitted back to us as a full package going forward, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Jimmy, for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. Thank hey. you for your patience. Good luck with everything, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, we'll still be talking. Yeah. Yes. We'll be going on for a while. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Do, right. do your best. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, just probably got to the schedule. Better awesome. The schedule, so there is no meeting tomorrow, uh, the, the, no joint meeting tomorrow, so we're... So just yeah. to summarize, next Monday we have town meeting, obviously, Correct. right? And, 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 I, and if you want to touch on that, I welcome any participation when we come to uh, the zoning. And I think people should be prepared to be at town meeting through the month of May. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I have seen that Camp one. Out. <laughs> Camp out. Yes. Camp out. Does electronic voting much so just make things faster? Or uh, John, John, John kind of cut, cut me short, okay. but just back to schedule. Sorry. So we're not meeting the second time in May. That's correct. We are meeting the second time in May. It's not May 14th. That's the first time we've done over here. What's today? Oh. Today's, Today's the, first. the first. May Day. <laughs> first. I thought this, but I thought this was a special one. It still counts. Okay. Yeah. It's All right. I see so, what you're saying. So the 14th will be the okay. second and last week. Yeah. Okay. We're not. Yeah. So when no, are we meeting? Yeah. May 14th. No, for the um, uh, uh, election appointment. The appointment for the seat. That's, That's going to be It's still up in the air. We made the invitation. It's going to be after the election. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's gonna be and that was a very good move on our part, I think. And that was, I commend ourselves for that aspect. Even though I'm, uh, I'm pounding the chest, I think that to hold it off till later is, is the right decision. I, I thought we did very well tonight. I want to thank everyone for their patience. 
everyone. Discussion. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Thank you very much. I, also, I, thank you. I exceptionally appreciate that we made space for the neighbors to be heard because mm -hmm. it makes as you can yep. a world yes. of a difference. Right. Without question. Yes. Do we have one more meeting with you, Liz? Yes. Yes, yeah. one more. <laughs> So regarding town meeting, can we, ha will there be like a sheet summarizing each zoning article, like a handout or? So there'll be a, uh, we met with John uh, today to go over the handout. So there'll be a handout for the the, um, the simpler articles, the showing the existing language and the proposed language mm -hmm. for pretty much everything. There'll be a map for the hotel overlay district. Um, I think there'll be some things where there won't be a handout, such as lighting, which is new. There's nothing to compare it to. Right. Um, and uh, recreational marijuana. I don't think there's a yeah. note for that. that we we want to just some busy. <laughs> <laughs> and just touch on. I don't can take a lot of time, but just touch so people understand the two marijuana. Oh yeah. Oh, oh right. Can, can you? Can you elaborate? So there'll, there'll be a. There's a proposal to take them up together, so that you only yeah, have to so debate marijuana once. Um, and so the zoning bylaw amendment would put a basically a prohibition in the zoning bylaw yeah. that would prohibit yes. the uses and the yeah. other article would put it in the general bylaw. So town council says that it's preferable <laughs> to be in the zoning but it, it could be in either. And the zoning requires a two-thirds to pass and the general bylaw requires the majority vote. If so we get the, okay. the zoning though, no, we don't need that other one. Right, if, they, if the zoning is approved then we would not Maybe we need the zoning is one that ZBC put together and we've reviewed, but we haven't reviewed, as a board, we haven't reviewed the other one. Well, it's not it's, a it's virtually identical. Right. Right. So I just wanted to point it's out. But who submitted that? Is it Use of family services. So I spoke to Norman yesterday and requested an amendment to the zoning bylaw that um, if it passes, that they would, in, in conjunction with the passing of the, the prohibition, <laughs> that there be a, um, a committee form to study and actually get information on the benefits and detriments the pros and cons, uh, yeah. uh, pros and cons of um, having rec recreational marijuana. And I think uh, that's, that's an interesting idea because you know some of our neighboring communities may start having these uses and you'll be able to see what the impacts are in other places before you... Well yeah, I mean I think there's that and then we also have um, yes, uh, Colorado, Washington, Alaska. It's just you know for some place close to home, Amherst. Um, we, when we yeah. sat at Holy Cross, the Amherst is gearing up and looking ready. to capitalize on this. They're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ready around. But I mean, look, we we have to hear the public speak, and that I think is determined by what comes up next. Oh, absolutely. So I think you know this is a land use board, so your perspective is more from a land use standpoint than than another. It's a little and friendly warning to all of us. <laughs> 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 Subliminal. <laughs> the Youth and Family Services Department is putting out a flyer that's focused on the social aspects of the marijuana bylaw and why they um, want it, everything banned. I didn't know if we should have a handout more factual about the, the zoning aspects of it and what, what, what's the impact of a yes vote versus a no vote. Like if we, if we vote no to, and we don't ban it, what are the state regulations that we're going to be subject to? Because the state has extensive regulations mm -hmm. on the marijuana that we would then mm -hmm. fall under if it doesn't, if the ban does not pass. It's very confusing. Right. Yes, to opt out, but it, their their handout focuses really on the social issues, not the uh, zoning issues. Mm -hmm. Good point. I think getting up and talking at town meeting would probably be worthwhile to, yeah. to just have another voice. Um, fun. Are you volunteering to help John with that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I, it's going to be a big discussion. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going, going be a big to be complicated, it's, and it yeah. it's, to be it's, prepared it's, would be one right day now. There's a knee, knee jerk reaction. Fire 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 fire. Fire. I think I, I'm interested in talking about that. Yeah. And, you, and you're running for office, so that'd be good publicity. That's right. Well, well face time. Yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't even think about that. Just, just one note: there is no smoking marijuana allowed during town meeting. Very sad. Because I think that would enhance. <laughs> it would, it, it would at least ex extend it. I think I think our board of health is doing a really good job concerning smoking and things like that too, which is yeah, they've raised the age. And just yeah. to clarify for some of our members, there was no taking of other illegal drugs during the during the meeting. <laughs> as, much as, as much as you may just want, just only prescribed ones. What, one year when John, I, we're talking I was about assistant. illegal drugs. <laughs> we're not talking about illegal drugs. Yeah. <laughs> the one the one year that when I was assistant to Muriel, when she wasn't there, I was sitting up where she sits. And I was the only person to vote against or f 
speaking out in favor of marijuana in the whole room. So it's kind of a tough room. <laughs> sure it is. All right, so I one think, time you missed it, and I right, was guys, sitting there, full public view. But I think we're extending our time beyond TV yeah. time. Yeah, let's, let's go. Oh, we lost. Oh, we're still on air. So. Oh, I just wanted to note that. So when Georgia worked in Danvers, she worked on the marijuana so she was season oh, expert. Nice. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, maybe. Well, Georgia. Any marijuana oh. questions? Just <laughs> 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 That'll make a splash. You are awful quiet over there. Yeah, we have <laughs> uh, Just quickly, what did Danvers end up doing? Well, Danvers gave two options. They gave the option to zone it to allow recreational marijuana, and then they also gave the two options to ban it in the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw. Um, so we gave the option to zone it, and we voted no. So obviously the action was to ban it both in the zoning bylaw and the general. Okay. And the zoning bylaw vote came first because that's really where it has the most glue, and okay. then the general really is straps and suspenders. So. Okay. Beautiful. Good to know. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'd be happy to get feedback on the wording for the handout or whatever. Right. So if people, or unless it's done. Oh. I'll distribute it after I. We can work on something. We can work on something. We'll distribute it. Actually, just honestly, for EHOP, Ken used to send us like a one or two page sheet that summarized each article yeah. in a paragraph, yeah. and that was we would like to send that out before town meeting, if possible. Yeah. <laughs> so if we have something similar. I think that's agreeable, mm -hmm. amendable. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstain. Thank you all. Thank you.